we should be good. All right. All right. Yeah, Marlena. Play that music, Marlena. Yeah, I think it's Marlena. You want to play that music? You want to play that music again? All right, ready? Go. They say do that. They don't recommend drinking a sparkling fizzy water before you do a podcast. But here at Side by Side, we break the rules. Record up. Record up. effect of when you like because i haven't i get that i want caffeine i'm like no i don't need it it's bad for me and um so i'm like i'll have one i'll have a sip or something once like once in a while and i was like it's, it's christmas i'm gonna have it <laughs> i grab the damn thing that gives dr pepper and i drank it i go oh my god this, this, like, i felt like the kid in can't hardly wait the beer has gone bad <laughs> like, so they're, they're like they're you know i left it up and they're like so you're just gonna like take a sip and leave it there i go well that like damn coke is that damn dr pepper tastes like shit they're like it's not dr pepper man i was like it says on the can sparkling water i was like oh oh okay now that's different uh it's it's weird when you think you're gonna get one thing and you get something else and your mind telling you and then you drink it you're like Bleh. but that was that was during christmas and uh we have here uh about side by side thank you for uh, chiming in we uh we're doing another our final christmas for uh, episode for 2020 we'll be looking forward to 2021 and um we have to wish uh ben a belated what i'm calling a happy merry birthday christmas because <laughs> that's, have... that's that's what i normally call it too yeah um, well happy merry birthday christmas to you ben thank you thank you thank you everybody for coming in to our last <laughs> christmas episode of 2020 don't want to say it's our last christmas episode ever because god oh, knows, no, don't. there's yeah. enough there's enough christmas movies to last us an eternity oh, oh you got there there are a lot um the uh, oh yeah the L- always and never you can you can hold you can't rely on those words you can't always or never rely on those words and it is it is a the I, guess, I don't know if it's the beginning or cedar fever is starting but it's kicking me so it's, it's te- if i start sneezing sorry everybody the cedar in central texas uh, will beat you up but uh with all that being said and our intro music and our and our uh, we're on our way so we decided uh, to do a, a classic and a uh, and a kind of a not so classic one, but a one that I really enjoy. So uh, we're doing today uh, a Christmas story. It is a 1983 PG 100 and uh, I'm sorry, one hour and 33 minutes comedy. Family was released November 18th, 1983. So a few months before I was born. Hey, so, one minute. My sorry, my audio isn't. It's like crackling. On your end, I don't know what's going on. Is it bacon and crackling? What's that? Is it bacon crackling? <laughs> bacon. <laughs> crackling bacon. Crack. Yes, exactly. You you can't, can you? No, I can hear you. I don't hear cracking. Do you hear cracking? Okay, let's see here. All right. How's how do you hear me now? No, you sound you sound good. Yeah. Can you hear yourself? Do you hear like an echo or a? I can't hear you now. I, I can't hear you. There's no audio. I can't hear. I, ben doesn't realize that you can't hear him. I think he turned his audio off. Can you hear me? Yeah, I heard you. I okay, heard okay. I could hear you. It's coming in like crystal clear. Okay, we're good now. <laughs> it was coming in crystal clear. I could hear. It really, it really was, man. I know. Like it, it was like. I, Cause what did I do? I changed the microphone to the internal mic. Yeah. And then, okay, yeah. Oh, sorry. But anyway, yeah, what you were saying about the Christmas story, uh, a classic 1983, <laughs> an hour and 33 minutes long. Feels like it's about three hours long. Um, yeah. I, honestly, dude, I think this is why TBS broadcasts this movie all day long. So you get the most out of your Christmas, you know, because it seems like time slows down whenever you watch this movie and you just um, can't get out of it, you know? 
I, I I love what you have to say about that because I think in the generation where everything's just flashing lights right now, or just, oh, look at me, everything's like Las Vegas. Like for someone that loves going to Las Vegas, I like to go to Las Vegas and see the bright lights there and be around the, you know, excuse me, like I said, the burps got to come out, slot machines and whatnot. Um, but on, on my apps and on my video games, and I don't need the flashy lights all the time. I mean, the video games are flashy, but you know what I mean? Like, it's kind of all the ads and everything. So you're interacting a lot where this is just a movie where you put it on and you watch it. It's a story. Um, maybe it is a, is a good reason for it to be aired on TNT and TBS and whatnot. It's a slow, it is, things slow times down, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and also, honestly, uh, having compared, and then our other movie we're going to do comparing, um, it's not, it's maybe, maybe it is a comparison or just kind of we're talking about is a, uh, 2008's Four Christmases. It's a PG-13 th uh, movie, 128 uh, minutes, comedy, drama, romance, released November uh, 26, 2008. So still around that holiday time, trying to ca cash in on that holiday money. But I mean, honestly, dude, there is connection between these two movies. A mm. simple, a simple... I, well, we, I guess we should talk about that once we get to the Four Christmases. There's a... Dude, that, that, that threw me off. <laughs> I don't... I, I don't make the fog, sir. I just deal with it. Uh, <laughs> Dude. Okay. So basically, let me see. The, let me read all the IMDb synopsis for the Christmas yeah, for, story. For, for, okay. Because I actually didn't even really. I was trying to understand the time frame. I, I never understood the time. I know it's got to be. Was, it's the 50s, right? Uh, it says here in the, 19, in the 1940s, a young boy named Ralphie attempts to convince his parents, his teacher, and Santa that a Red Rider BB gun really is the perfect Christmas gift. So there's the drive. Um, it, he wants that to... nails it, dude. I mean, it's it's not a it's dude, it's like a perfect kid movie, man. Because like, whenever you're that age and you just want something so bad, like your your fantasies and all this other goofy stuff, like you really get do get lost in it. Like you you, I don't know about you, man. And I still do this to this day. But like, I'll build stuff up in my mind, like conversations that I think are going to go, like, not well. Like, I'll just be like, okay, this is the worst-case scenario, and I go and have the conversation. It's not anywhere close <laughs> to, what, to what I thought it was going to be. You know, like, it was not near as bad as I thought it was going to be at all. And I feel like that is kind of – it's almost the opposite in this one. Like, he's just ex the most extravagant, like, this is what's going to happen. This is the beautiful picture about it. And he gets to it, and he's just, like, crushed. And I think that may be like I used to do that. And then it just, it happened so many times that I just go the opposite way, you know, like, <laughs> huh? Just, Sorry. Were you, were you saying something? I don't think like, are you saying like people, it's hard to pay attention when you're days off. Dude, you're so right. Like <laughs> those I thought my headphones cut out because I felt like that was the most profound thing I'd ever said on some side by side. And then nothing <laughs> got caught. Like, that, that would be it. You know? You're like, Good morning. Oh, Good but morning. Yeah. oh, by the way, we are doing an early morning episode, uh, not not late night. Um, I uh, oh, we can see the sun behind me. Oh, I don't. I don't even have my bright light on. I have the natural lighting. Um, <laughs> you know, the the thing I love about this movie is I feel like I can sh I definitely can show this to my son at any time. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. a very very safe movie. Um, opposed to a lot of stuff out here, I like that it's very really, like through the day and like and 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 like I still have those. I I I have that all the time. Uh, you know, I don't know if it's. I try to think about why am I like this? Is it because I was raised the way I was, or is it because I like to um, observe or acting or a writer or film whatever? Is it why why do I really I, I absorb I absorb a lot of my surroundings and just kind of see what's what's going on, thinking that I think I can project what's going to happen and then just never. What and it 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 it, it does all. Uh, God, that happens a lot with family members. You you get that a lot with four Christmas, Christmases. Um, this one is just kind of you're kind of seeing the glimpses. So basically, what happens with the main character Ralphie is he um, he daydreams and he has these little scenarios where they're he's the hero. You know when he talks about uh, <laughs> when he talks about the, the 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 he wants this red this this BB gun. And by the way, growing up, did you ever get a BB gun? Oh yeah, I do. Oh for sure. I don't think it was ever like a Christmas gift or anything. It was just like we have this BB gun laying around the house. You can go use it. And I, I would. I'd get home after school, man, and I would go with my BB gun, do the pump action and everything like that, and just try and hunt stuff. I only was successful like two or three times. Yeah, I was never allowed to have one. Uh, oh, my neighbors, so sorry. My neighbors ruined it for me. I remember yeah. one, of the, one, of the, one of the neighbors' name was Aaron, and I won't say the other one's name is Daniel. Like, they're brothers. 
and they mm-hmm. reminded me of um, the, the characters from uh, Honey I Blew, oh, Honey I Shrunk the Kids, like the like the the. I thought the, you were gonna say from Dust Till Dawn. <laughs> Richie and, and Seth. No, no, they remind me. Of, they were always reminded me of the um, even the Mark Fewer character, uh, or Matt. Sorry, Matt Fewer uh, character. The the dad that's in there. The um, not the Rick, the opposite of Rick Moranis from from mm-hmm. Honey. Even their dad reminded me of that, but. Uh, they reminded me of the, the two kids, the younger ones, um, the, I forgot their names, but this kid with the, the nerdy kid with the glasses and then the more of the, 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 not the jock kid, but more of the, the outdoorsy kid. Like they reminded yeah. me of them, but they would, fight, they would fight and they would like beat each other up. I was like, Oh crap. Like I was always like, okay, I gotta be careful. They get it. They get in fights. Gotta run away. But they had BB guns. And you know what these, these crazy look like, I don't remember how old I was. It was like second grade, third grade. They would shoot each other with it. With the, like they would, they'd had two and the parents never told me like, I'm like, you could poke an eye out. You can. And then one time Aaron, they get shot right here and his eyes fold up. And that's when they got him. They lost him for like a week or something, but they got him back the following. Uh, and, I'll, and I think that's that, that, that getting shot in the eye. I think that is true. I mean, he says it here in the movie. That's the whole, you're going to shoot your eye out. Like, yeah. I mean, for well, gun, what's up? And, and, and another thing too, I mean, the, the main reason, like he was fine. He, he would have been just fine, but he set it up behind something that had metal on it. You know, it's, it's, it's more along the lines of like, is don't get me wrong. Like, <laughs> his dad should have had enough common sense to be like, all right, don't do this. Don't do that. And like teach him, but they just sent him out there with a gun. And he had no idea, man. I mean, don't get me wrong. It's, it's a BB gun and you could do minimal. I mean, you could do some damage, but it's yeah. going to be, it won't be as bad as like if you have a 22 or something like that. I could, I, I wouldn't be able to have a 22 for sure. Yeah. But isn't that like the next step above a, a BB gun? <laughs> the 22? Yeah that's, yeah. that's what I'm saying. But you, you could, I mean, you very well could potentially kill somebody with a BB gun. But yeah. I think the chances are very, very low compared to a 22 where you could, you could kill somebody with a 22. Yeah. I like the, uh, a 22. You could, uh, at least it's like a firecracker. You can just scare them off if you don't <laughs> really hit them. Yeah. Then the bullets yeah. are small. I didn't, I, I didn't, when I was a kid, you know, we could go around hunting, but no one ever explained to me anything. It's just like, that's it. This here, you know, so I have to pick up on my own. And then you're seeing a uh, when you actually get to hold a 50 cal in your hand, like a gauge, mm-hmm. and you see how big that is, and you see how small 22 is compared to that. You're like, holy crap! They, this is like the bullets vary from this tiny to this big. Like, wow! Mm-hmm. Like these things, and either one, this little one and this big one, does the same, does the same aftermath. Or it's supposed to. I mean, I don't even know how to tell my son what guns are. Like they're meant to protect, destroy, hunt. I don't like in the modern time. I don't understand why we need. I mean, I'm not a, I'm not a, a, a anti-gun person. I'm not a pro guy. I just guns, you know, whatever. Um, um, you know, I don't have a, I don't have an opinion on on guns. But a BB gun, on the other hand, we do have one, and I do have that Red Rider one, and I did buy it when we, <laughs> when I first got my house because I, was, I I saw it and it was on sale for like nineteen dollars or something. It's like, yeah, I've always wanted a BB gun. I bought it, but then I bought the wrong BBs. I bought pellets instead of BBs, and there's mm-hmm. a big difference. You have a, okay, so a pellet gun, a pellet gun is under a BB gun, right? Or which is the one that hurts more? I think the BB gun hurts more. There's, there's one that's like a I, pump, a pump action, and there's one you could do CO two in. So I think the CO two is the pellet gun. The pellet because it, yeah, because I mean my BB gun, every BB gun that I've seen, um, is is pump action, but that's probably not the case. For dude, I used to, I used to see people with like automatic BB guns and stuff like that too, <laughs> yeah. like. You, you would just put the BBs in there and pop, 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 pop. And they had like a little, you could put like a little cartridge of them in there and stuff like that. I mean, they, they had, they had modifications for all sorts of goofy stuff. I mean, welcome to Texas, you know, yeah. we got, we got automatic BB guns. Um, but, uh, no, um, uh, yeah, dude, no, I, I was, I grew up around guns my whole life, man. Um, my, my dad too. I mean, he was, I mean, hell, he'll he'll eat off a deer for a whole year, man. Like oh, wow. he 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 like I was talking to him the other day, and he was like, "Yeah, I gotta. I still haven't gotten a deer yet. I need to get one of those because he he doesn't like going to the store. He doesn't. Yeah. He just likes working on the on the farm and going about his day, man. Um, and yeah, dude, it was uh, even even my mom like we would we would go dove hunting every year. I mean, that was like that was the thing. So I was, I, for the first couple of years, I was a bird dog. Bird dog. I like, <laughs> yeah. I would just yeah. I would go and find the birds and everything like that. And, um, 
don't want to get too graphic on the yeah. Christmas episode, but yeah, you know, whenever you find a bird and you shot it and it's not dead, you gotta. <laughs> so, oh, I got a um, I got a deer story like that. <laughs> my my dad, but I it's not it's not good for the side by side. But I mean, it doesn't matter. Yeah. We say whatever. But my dad, he he thought he had a uh, a buck, and um, he grabbed it by the antler, and he pulled it back. And as he was pulling it back, the damn thing came. He got it in the neck. It looked like a clean shot, mm-hmm. you know. And uh, he was like, "Okay," and it was down. He grabbed it by the antler, started pulling, and he pulled it a good like ten feet. And the damn thing woke up and it turned his antler well when he had it like that it, the antler went and dug into his forearm like it, 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 it um, punctured and he started bleeding and then well my dad carries his 22 on his hand so he got up and he, and he just he just shot it he's like well now it's dead and you're just watching that you're like hmm all right uh, i don't and then you know you watch more movies and shows and you realize you put it out it's misery but at the same time i'm pretty sure my dad shot it because it could stab them like, <laughs> oh yeah so. uh yeah that that reminds me of me myself and Irene whenever they come across the cat. But um, yeah, man, it was uh, it's kind of funny that you know this. I never even thought of this movie as like bringing up guns and everything like that. I mean, obviously that's the main main kind of theme of this movie. But like I said, you you kind of you see the the gun is like a toy, and it really isn't yeah, a toy, exactly yeah. you know. Um, it's, it really, I mean, it is, it is serious and that's, uh, I mean, I don't think that's really what he's going for, but I mean, he does end up, he has that, you know, cautionary tale of like, don't shoot your eye out. Don't shoot your eye out. What's the first thing he goes and does is he goes and almost shoots his eye out. Um, but like I said, it's the reason he, he went and did that is because he didn't know any better. He didn't know to not set up something behind metal that it could bounce back and ricochet and stuff like that. So, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to blame his dad or anything, but I know, I know the first time that, you know, I would have had a gun or anything like that, you know, they're going to show me like, Hey, don't do this. Don't do that. Mainly because, you know, I was kind of a stupid kid and they knew that I was prone to accidents. But, but put it this way, they, they were, but you're, you're experienced. There's no experience in this family. You're seeing all this. Uh, I love the fact that they do show you a lot of the inside of a family, how they hang out. Yeah. Um, I, I would think modern times where now we're at in 2020 going into 2021 where um, you're going to see more people with uh, their cell phones in their hands and people conversating um, through cell phone like I'm can probably be in the living room and someone can text me in the kitchen like hey come over here you know it's like instead of walking and you know it's like uh, everybody's just connected and in a world where I don't know where I, I feel like the 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 BB gun uh, it is a dangerous thing and he doesn't have any experience Rafi did you see his dad's not a like a hunter his mom's not a hunter his little, his little obviously his little brother is a little brother um but i'll say that uh for the gun part and and it, you learn you let le- lessons learn man he messed them like he obviously doesn't really go that bad i mean it could go worse but um maybe he'll know that's how you learn you you, you learn to touch you learn that the, the skillet's hot by touching it sometimes you know you don't mean to but you gotta you gotta figure out how do you know if it's hot or not and yeah I, I, with gun control and people just trying to ban them, I can see why in the modern time why we why we don't need them. But I can see why we need them. I don't I don't know the a BB gun, especially at this time. Like if my son were to be like, "Hey, Dad, uh, I saw that movie and it has a BB gun. I want a BB gun." Well, we happen to have one, like you, like like the way you said, "Hey, we have one here. We can use it." But I think I would be more. <laughs> I'd be a little bit more like, hey, let me show you how this thing actually works. Because it is scary when you see your, your son pick up a water gun and then accidentally push it towards himself and he's squeezing. And you're like, hey, don't do that. But you, you, you see like, um, you know, you want to teach him like uh, in, that's just instinct. Like it's an easy instinct for a kid to do that. You know, stories. I don't want to get too graphic, especially on the Christmas story. Uh, I don't even realize we're going to talk about the gun part of this long. Me neither, dude. Yeah, but, uh, but it, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a thing where... I feel like, I mean, I do want to switch off that because that, that could be a topic forever. I, I do feel like with, uh, with a lot of the theme in this movie, it is heavy. It's called The Christmas Story. It is heavy on Christmas. It kind of tells you the experience of being a little boy and what you're doing as a, you, the stuff you have to go through. I will say that I did love the performance of the little brother. The, yeah. the little brother, he doesn't have much lines. His, he's, 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 he's more of a reaction character. Like he, he, you see a lot of the crap he has to go through. And I feel for him more like the little, like even, even when they put him on the damn slide, he doesn't want to do it. You know, he doesn't want to see Santa. He, when he's at the, when he's running around, he's, he's all, all dolled, he's all uh, wrapped up in his own, 
his own clothes where he's like he can't even move his arms like he is he's all and even when the the, the, the bully comes around and uh, the first thing he does is just pushes him down like <laughs> he's like a turtle a turtle turtle he's like a turtle when you push him over he can't he's like he can't get he can't roll over he's like guys can't help me you know and oh man okay so now we're getting into like the bully the bullying of this movie so the, a lot of the topics of this movie are, are very lightly coded i would say especially for for the 80s this might be a, a movie ahead of its time talking about that stuff um I think it was it was that perfect time, man, where you have, I mean, in the 80s, you know, if you're growing up in the 40s, then you're like, this is so nostalgic for you. Like, this is why you, you would show this to your kids, like, this is what it was like for me to grow up, you know? Um, but even at that, me being raised in the 90s is kind of similar. Uh, yeah, no, no, no. And, and that's what's crazy about it, man, is like, you, we never listened to the radio growing up. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, like I said, it, there's, I mean, we we did, but in a different way. Well, you know, TV, the TV was the radio. TV. Exactly. And, um, you know, it just, it seems like this is kind of like normal. Like it's, it's something that we kind of go through day to day, but in a different time period, yeah. you know, like it's, it's stuff that we, we see still. And, you know, you got kids that are like, you can't do that. Oh, I triple dog dare you, you know, and you, you learn about the, the etiquette and like he, he keeps on saying throughout the entire movie, kingdom, you know, like it, it really is like, in, it's a, it's a totally separate world whenever you're a kid. And um, you see, you see life differently. You see things differently. And like his, his imagine gets, it's the best one who is it gene shepherd is like the the narrator and also who wrote like the little novella or novel about this and um like it's it's crazy man like his just the way he talks about stuff just really sets up the scene you know like the what was he talking about the over there in the window and look and everything like our seasonal bacchanalia like he was just using every word for christmas like it it just set it up so, so well. Like you, you know your. <laughs> as far as history goes, like you know you're close, but you're still so far away, man. Like this, this seems so far away, but it was only what, sixty years ago. But oh, the forties. Like yeah. The 80, uh, well, yeah. I guess. Yeah. No. No. Forty. Yeah. Wow. Eighty years ago. So if this what, is the. Right? That's, yeah, yeah, because it'd be this. This is from the '40s, so we're watching it now, and it's like 80 years now. Um, almost, it's getting, from the '80s. I mean, it's what? It's in two years, it'll be 40 years old. Or, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, three well, years, I guess. to three, three, two, whatever technicalities. But um, well, that's that's nuts, dude. Like even this movie is starting to, you know, age, and it's. Uh, but I feel like it's a. It's one of those like every most everybody knows a Christmas story. Well, I think I think you should be introduced to it at a younger age. The thing, the thing, I, this is what I wanted to bring up. What got me with this movie was I have zero nostalgia factor with this, even though I do, I did see this as as a kid, uh, and that was a, that was a thing that um, I noticed. So you said it does feel like a slow movie. It feels like it feels like it was a, like a MCU five hour, like sit down, and but it felt like a slow burn because it's meant to be like that your attention span back then was meant to hold you could hold this you know when i was mm. taking a marketing class and it said you have six seconds to keep someone's attention and i was like okay and that was like in 2005 2007 and fast forward to 2015 now like you have two seconds to get some i'm like what if, if things are moving so fast at that i don't need you i don't know how you're gonna get you, you just you end up having this it'll you'll find its way you just throw it out there people will find it uh but um Man, like that, the attention span of somebody. I, I like to uh, do a comparison of movies when Vulcan Videos was still around. Oh, I love Vulcan Videos. Vulcan Video was a video movie rental store here in Austin, and it had been going wow before it shut down a couple, like maybe like eight years ago, maybe maybe five years ago. I forgot when it actually went down. But um, you go and you you go rent your movies. And uh, when I got there one time, um, I asked a guy kind of around the counter because I've been renting a lot of movies, and I go, hey. What movie? Or no, I saw it in the uh, suggestion. It said we suggest suggest this movie, and it was called um, what do you call it? Uh, Payback with uh, Mel Gibson. And I was like, oh, I've seen that movie. I I, I get it. And they, and the guy goes, have you seen the original one with with me with uh, Lee Marvin? 
And I was like, what? There's a Lee Marvin version? He goes, yeah, dude, that's the original one. This, this, is, this is a remake, basically. You should watch them. And that's, I, I, when I say that's my first side-by-side I've ever done, was I took, um, I saw a point, I, I saw first, I saw Point, uh, point Blank, which is, let me, let me look, let me give some, let me give a little shout out here with Point Blank, because I, I, I think um, what I'm about to say will make sense. Um, let's see. Point, oh, oh, not Point Break, Point Blank. <laughs> and they remade it in 2019. I forgot about that. Let's see. Uh, well, let me see. Is it not on here? Where are you? 1967. Here we go. It is. Uh, it's not rated. <laughs> um, it, it would be R if it were rated. Uh, point Break, 1967, hour and 32 minutes, crime, drama, thriller. After being double-crossed and left for dead, a mysterious man named Walker single-mindedly tries to retrieve the money that was stolen from him. Now, if you put payback on here, just real simple. On your IMDb, right? Payback. A 19, it's a night class of 1999. That's a, I didn't realize that. That's a good year. Yeah. It says, it's after a successful heist, Porter is left for dead. Once he recovers, he seeks vengeance and wants to share of his money. Of the, uh, wants his share of, of the money. So kind of sounds similar, right? Mm-hmm. But the, I, what I remember is it's very similar. Like it's almost not shot by shot, but the story's told the same way the story. And there's a little change in the the, the the more modern one. But when I saw the first one point, the 1967 version, it took me the whole night to watch that movie. Like I couldn't, I couldn't focus on it. Like I was so, I was like, I need to watch, I want to know, I want to watch this movie. And I, I sat, I was just focusing myself because the scenes are drawn out a little bit longer and you want to get Lee Marvin, you want to get him in that shot. And he moves real slow and he's, he's talking, he's, you're getting all the sense. I, I mean, they're still trying to figure out movies that, the, you know, we still were, I think we're always trying to figure them out, but the, the pattern of this one, but when you, as soon as I put payback on, dude, it was like, I just breezed through that movie because it's more modern time. So if you were to make, uh, which I found out, um, they made a Christmas story too. I didn't know there was a sequel to this. Um, but now, right now I just, when I put on the Rotten Tomatoes just to kind of get it up, it said, uh, so I think maybe we should look into that at the end. But what I was trying to say is with the movie with Point Bl- uh, Blank and um, Payback, it's the same movie essentially, but just the fact that they're 30 years apart, that mm-hmm. they had to kind of modernize it a little bit. Uh, maybe the Christmas story needs a little modernization, but I think the fact that it's been, it's, it's made with somebody's install- so many people's nostalgias from the 80s. That when their kids, you know, went through the, you know, the 2000s, they probably watched it all through their youth or maybe someone like from my generation or, you know, like their parents watched it all the time. I never watched this one. This one kind of just, uh, I just kind of would remember it, um, scenes from it. And I I think that's what the movie is like. It's like a lot of little scenes, little cutaways, little, you know, uh, I would would even think like Family Guy got a lot of their, uh, Seth uh, McFarlane got a lot of his inspiration from kind of something like this where, he does a lot of cutaways. On all, that's all Family Guy is, you know, cutaways. Mm-hmm. So I think this is basically what, what, what the, the beginning uh, version of this. Um, I think, but I me mean, not, not having that, I did notice movies about any movie that was made before I was born, even like this one in 83 and I was born in 84, I have a hard time keeping up with it. Anything I watch from the 50s, 60s, 70s, the ones that do get, the ones that I don't have a hard time with are like the Bela Lugosi, Dracula's. Like um, those older ones, I can watch those. Like, I'm like, ooh, like those, like, oh, it's interesting to me. But, uh, but like something like uh, any, anything from like 80, 79, it's, it's hard for me to just kind of, I guess, I guess I didn't, I don't know, I guess this, unless it was introduced to me, it was really hard for me to like stick with it. But anything, I noticed anything after 80, 84, I, I'm, I'm, even if, even if it was made in 84, I, I'm like, hey, I remember that movie. Hey, I know, I remember yeah. this. But, uh, but this movie, I, it, and it, I don't think it, I think it tippy toes in the beginning of blue collar and white collar. You don't really get that they're poor. You don't really get that they're rich. It's kind of a little bit of everybody. Um, it's really hitting that middle class, you know. I have, yeah. I have no issue with them being like the stereotypical mom, dad, son. Yeah. I don't have any issue with that. Um, I'm not mistaken. Do you get any other interaction from any other family members, or is it just these four? Not family. No. Not family, right? Um, no, no, no. It's it was just them, which which you know is now that you mention it is kind of odd. You know, you figure you'd have grandparents or something like that, but the, both of the, I mean, at least the dad is a little bit older, so yeah, life so expectancy you, is probably no, not as 
you know. And in the eighties and forties, it was a lot lower, you know, now, now we're, we're, we're over living our state. Uh, yeah. But um, Hey, well, with teach their own. I would like to have a little extra time on the clock. Um, but the, the, to, to say that, to, to see this movie and to, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at the scene right now, I'm more towards the end and I'm seeing the scene where they, cause it is, a, we, I don't, we don't, I don't think we were to watch this movie together at the same time. Like it would be a, it'd be a six hour podcast, um, but, uh, yep. but like seeing the way they, they decorated the trees, seeing the way it, it, it has, it has, it has the realness to it and they, they make it, it's like a little joke. It's not like a big joke. Um, the bully scene, like that kid, God. Oh, was that the damn actor's name? Oh, I thought you needed his name in the movie. Well, what's his name? Um, uh, Scott Fargus. Oh, like, okay, Farkas. I heard Vargas. <laughs> so, Zach Ward. He, he was in Freddy vs. Jason. He's in, he's a brother in that one. So he uh, he plays the older brother that committed suicide. Uh, sorry, it's a little horror uh, horror shout out. But he played, <laughs> dude. He he really does play that um that uh that like little spoiled little kid the little bully kid and the his little friend like the little um you're either you're either like the way they break it up you're either i mean the narration i love the narration he breaks it up for you so you don't you you he, he fills in a lot of the blanks but um like how he says the um <laughs> he says you're either a bully or you're you're getting bullied or you're i forgot what he calls the names a toady a what a toady or a crummy i think oh yeah crummy or a toady and then he's and they're like ha 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 he hits them he's like, ha, ha 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 and he hits, hits his crummy but he hits like their friends like they're still they're still enemy i mean they're still bad kids even though they're friends like they start hitting each other the bigger one just knocks the hell out of them like as as a director i would have been like dude would you can we can we put a lot of stuffing in your as a kid i'd, I'd like can we put a lot of stuffing in your sleeve so he could really well on you like it's like because he hits them hard like <laughs> yeah but dude in the 80s i'm sure that was fine i mean it's just that's, oh, that's, that's true. Normal. That's normal. You think they, yeah, they, let, no, they let him go at it? You'd, you'd, you'd have to, you'd have to cover your ass on that one. Yeah, they, they let him. Uh, oh yeah, because imagine if you do it now in 2020. By the time 2040 comes around, you can get sued for something. <laughs> like, right. It was like, I can't sleep at night. I, I remember I was getting punched on this movie set. Uh, it was part of the movie, but still, um, I think I think with uh, with a lot of the the way. That, the way the story is, it's just like a glimpse, I guess, is what we're seeing. A glimpse of, in this, uh, in Ralphie's life. It's not really like a beginning, middle, and end. He does want the, the drive is the BB gun. Um, but for, for, for the most part, uh, it's just him and how he interacts with his, with his daily routine. Do you, does he have a crush on his teacher? No, I don't think so. He just wants to get good grades to get the BB gun? Okay. I don't even think he wants to get good grades. He just wants to, he wants to be praise for coming up with something that he thinks is so original you know it's like like you said it's that that's right it's that that 10 year old like you know or however old he is in this you know he's just like he wants to be all right yeah like this is this is the best thing i can put forward you know this is my best argument for a bb gun and it's just so simple and so bland but he just thinks it's the best thing in the world man you know I, I did like how he uh, has that little dream where he shows up and he's all, like his parents need him to to uh, defend him with the BB gun. He can shoot the, mm-hmm. the the crooks and they're dressed like in the black and white stripes, bandit yep. kind of looking thing. Like and they're like f- crawling in like a like a silent movie kind of thing. Like oh yeah, we don't know anybody. Oh, well, we'll get you next time, Ralphie. Like and, he, and, yeah. and and I will say, did that guy jump over the fence onto a horse? Yeah, that's like, pretty. The horse. That's pretty badass. Yeah. Like he jumped over a fen- a picket fence to land on top of a horse. <laughs> that is pretty impressive. Yeah, yeah. I, mean, I think I felt they sped it up a little bit because he jumped. He jumped kind of. It was kind of a quick insert. I mean, the whole scene is kind of like when they're running around. But I feel like on that point, I was like, that dude just jumped over. And if it's eighty three. Like, I, I, what you see is what you get. There's no CGI in here. There's no like the guy literally jumps over a, fe- a picket fence and Maybe lands on top of a horse. Maybe it's just some clever editing or something. Or, oh, yeah, like they could have uh, the one guy jump over. and then they're, But no, it's, it's, it's a smooth transition. It's literally him jumping. You could see him jump over the fence onto the horse. And I was just like, what? <laughs> um, uh, the father is played by, let's see, the dad is played by Darren McGavin, the old man Parker, which is, what do you remember him from? Um, honestly, I can't remember but it's it is familiar like uh let's see here oh Give come on second. come on billy i hope you can find what you're looking for oh billy madison's dad he's billy madison's yeah. dad 
God, man. And he, like I said, I, I kind of feel bad now, but and he, oh, he looks kind of old in this one. And yeah, he died in 2006, even, and he was born in 1922, yeah. and he was 83. When, so let's do a quick little side-by-side -side math on my cell phone because I uh, <laughs> did it in my head. So if he died in 2006 and he was born in 1922, he was 84 when he passed. So, I mean, it says so, it's 83, but how, how old, what, when Billy Madison came out in 93? 93? 93? Yeah. 95, 95. 95. Wow, really? Yeah, 95, 95, 19, 20, 20. He was, no, he couldn't, he's 70, no, I did this wrong, didn't I? If he was born, it was, if it was 1995 and he was born in 1922, that'd make him then 70. He was, he was 73. Whenever he did three in this movie, well, we have stumbled around. No, something. no, no, no. In Billy Madison. In Billy Madison. Sorry. Yes. Sorry. And Billy, and then, but and in this one, he's what? So he's got to be sixty. He's got to be in his. Um, yeah, yeah. He's uh, sixty-one. In a Christmas story. Yeah, he's sixty-one. So how old was Ralphie? Like ten. So his dad had him when he was fifty. I guess in the story. Yeah, and but honestly, I mean, he looks older, but he could pass as like a mid 50s well know? i like, don't i mean even 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 though just, i'm just saying the energy he brings that's yeah. awesome I, I i love that that i don't feel an age on him he's mm -hmm. he's in the seat he's up to date he's a smart ass he's the what, okay so explain to me what's going on with the leg lamp why is that such an important what, what how first of all how does he even get there i, I didn't i didn't catch well, how it how it showed up so he he um he does like a crossword or something like that and sends it in and then they send out prizes. And that's why he's like, oh, it could, you know, $50,000 past prize. Like, that's like the biggest prize you can get. And so my deal too, is like, this is, Ralphie's kind of getting this stuff from his dad too. Like his dad is just like head in the clouds kind of guy. I mean, he's, he's pretty grounded. Don't get me wrong, but even when he gets that lamp, like he oh, he sells he it up, feels, so he goes all the way outside. Yeah. Put it, and, 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 and then the neighbors get into it. But nobody nobody should be excited about that lamp. But he won it, you know, like that's his. Like he this was this was his prize. It's like it's a major award. Like he keeps saying that, you know, like he just he has it built some built up so much in his head. So if I feel like if he doesn't have this thing, if this is not the best thing in the world to him, yeah, he's gonna lose his mind. Like, this is, I don't think it's necessarily, like, I don't even think he sees it as a sexual object. I oh, really no, I don't, I don't see it like that. No, I, don't, I don't see it like that. I was and, wondering, like, now you explain to me, I'm, I, I see why Ralphie is the way he is a lot more. I connected the dots, but I was like, is that really what happened? Now, now do you explain it to me? And then I'm, I'm at the part right now whenever he does his, like, little orphan Annie, like, decoder thing. Like, yeah, that's and his... he's, he's starting, and that's, that's another thing about this movie, too, is, like, you're at that age where reality is kind of sitting in where everything isn't always as glossy and as great as you think, like, Oh, it's just saying drink more over oval team. This yeah, is commercial. Right. Like he's, he's starting to pick up on that. Like he, it doesn't, he, he isn't like awesome. I'll go drink more oval team right now. It's, it pisses him off. Cause he was fixing you know? something special and it's just an ad. Cause he says it's an ad and I, w did, I didn't even, that didn't click till right now. You're right. Like you're going, that reality is kicking in. And, and, you know, his dad almost kind of does the opposite, you know, like he gets this lamp and he's just like, this is the best thing in the world, you know, Absolutely. whereas anybody else would be like, this is all I got, you know, like he's, he's, <laughs> he's had all those disappointments that Ralphie has had, you know, oh, this is just a uh, commercial, all this stuff. So he's like, you know, if I get a win, I'm going to take a win. Yeah. You just you have that that older older mentality of like, oh, yeah. oh, she she just broke the lamp, and I have in my notes right here. Like I said, dude, my notes are very short right, for right. a Christmas story. Um, but he, <laughs> I remember I wrote it down. I said uh, at the very end where he was just so mad. He's like, the only words you got out were not a finger. Like he just. <laughs> 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 I, I guess I never I'm sure I caught it before but it just was it was great man just like it was the stupidest thing it had nothing to do with anything but not a finger like he was, he was just so upset he couldn't even talk um, but yeah you know like it's it's almost like this lamp is his life's work 
of like he's been doing this crossword puzzle for years and years. <laughs> I finally, and finally got it. it. Paid off. Finally paid off, and like this is what he got. Um, yeah, yeah, it's um, it's interesting. I, I'm I'm just kind of this isn't even in my notes. Like I said, I'm just kind of putting the dots together, like you were saying earlier. Like, okay, there's there's a lot of parallels between his dad and him, even though they show kind of like that disconnect. Yeah. You know, like, oh, he, he he gets along with his mom a lot better and everything like that. But his dad is, and they do a good job of that too. Like, I, I feel that. Showing... Yeah, I I feel like for what what they were showing dads like in the forties, I think he does a good job. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Whereas, and and oddly enough, man, like this, his character reminds me a lot of my stepdad. Oh. Like, just like you know, like <laughs> kind of perpetually grumpy but um very loving at the same time like you know uh, close to the end whenever he gets in the bb gun like what's that over there like my dad used to do that to me you know like we for one christmas i got a bike and he had it on the garage he's like i think we got one more present over here uh, you know kind of thing after we'd opened everything up and i i got that bike and uh it was it was pretty great but uh you know i and he was he was born in the forties, so that kind of makes sense. I mean, he's he's going off of probably what he kind of grew up with, but just being a little bit nicer. I, I I see that you know mostly happening in a lot of people's lives. Like you tend to take what your parents did and just yeah. kind of like add a little bit more niceness to it, or or go shittier with it. Um, yeah, no, no, there's there's that too. So uh, like I said, think. I, as I'm getting older and now I, I have a son, like I can totally see what you're talking about. Like the fruit don't fall too far from the tree, man. Now it's up to you to decide if you want to be the same fruit or be your own fruit or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I've never really done a breakdown with this movie. Like I never actually just like, I mean, I'm, here, I'm at the scene where I'm already at the end where they're at the Chinese restaurant talking, like, you know, they're hanging out and cause the dogs came in, but like, you're still family. They're still dressed up. Like, like Christmas, I think it's more about the time, and that's I think that's what uh, annoys me <laughs> uh, about some families, mine especially. Uh, not like you know, not my mind, but my <laughs> my you know brothers, and my aunts and uncles and all that, is that they they think it's a uh, to me my as a you know one of the younger, I don't know what I'm trying to say. It's like every time I go home, it's just like it's supposed to be a special time to hang out and stuff, but everyone still cheats it like it's regular. I'm like, come on, man! It's like I'm supposed to get together, you know? Like especially now yeah. where you where you feel like social media and everything keeps you connected when it really doesn't. I mean, it just basically shows you yourself self gloat. That's all it is. So, uh, but, but there's a thing about actually spending time with somebody and like, even like with us doing this, this is still, I, f- I feel like time well spent because we're getting to know each other. We're talking, but if we were to do this live, it'd be a totally different experience. It'd be yeah. a totally different thing, you know? We'll see. And I don't want to, I want to just assume I know what you're talking about. The whole thing, family thing i mean i feel like at least for me whenever i do that i just kind of like you said they they spend time together like it's normal and you know if you're far away and you don't get to see everybody all the time like it isn't normal and you kind of do like ralphie and just kind of build it up in your head like oh we're gonna have a great time and we're gonna go do this we're gonna go sing and do all the christmas stuff like that's that's what i always like anticipate as weird as like it never happens but I, I still kind of do that anticipation of like, okay, this is what, you know, we're finally going to come together. We're not going to bitch and moan about stuff. You know, we're just going to have a good time. Nothing, nothing crazy is going to happen. That's, that's always the expectation, but never the outcome. You know, there's always, there's always some stupid little fight that happens. Yeah. Just, you know, and that's, that's what family is about. And that's, that's what you kind of get to see in the Christmas story. Like it's, it's literally a day in the life of, and you know, you get to see him and Randy just like picking at each other, and he looks at him weird, like he's like this is a goofy younger brother who's like spoiled, and the only way they can get him to eat is making him act like a pig and stuff I like, like that. that. I like that part. That showed, and especially for E three, I think for showing how like you, I don't know, man, like if your kid is not eating, I just feel like that. Then like you yell at him, "Oh, I find starve." Nah, like that was such a reverse moment. I took that to heart, like. You have to speak their. You have to speak their language. Speak their speak. Not just children. Everybody, uh, you got to find a way, and that's how you communicate. You find a way to both get on solid ground and go. And and he's a little kid. It's hard for him to. I mean, um, let's uh, let's give a uh, the actor who plays Ralphie was named Peter Billingsley. Billingsley, he uh, he was twelve in this movie. 
when it came out. And uh, Randy is his little brother, right? It's Ian mm -hmm. Petrella, Patria. He was three years younger, so he was nine in this movie. But uh, he's got some stuff. It's the last thing he. Oh, he's still acting. Cool. He's still doing stuff. Oh, but he took a huge gap. He went 87, 91, 2006, 2009, 2015, 2021. That's cool. He's still he's still acting though. I like to see that. Um, I'll say that the the interaction that they had for for the brother's standpoint uh, point of view was 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 nice. Um, the like I said, the mother communicating with him. He doesn't have any lines, does he, Randy? Or maybe oh, other yeah. outside has, outside outside of the couple. outside of the outside. Of, but I mean, like, I guess a few, right? I was talking about like when he gets pushed over, he's like, "Help me, help me." You can hear him, but I don't feel like those lines are meant to like really. He has a few lines. Nothing I mean, well, I, story yeah, but, I, but that's what I was saying. For for him, like in every scene he's in. Uh, he's got a nice expression. There's a point for him being in the scene, even though he doesn't talk. And I'm saying yeah. that as a, as, a, as a director, as an actor, and I'm like, all right, cool. You, you, it's okay to have a, a character in a scene that is supposed to be impacted by it. I, I, I and, and then he says it like the, the going up, a, getting the photo with Santa Claus is supposed to be a nice experience. And it's like, they, and, and as we know, CJ is no stranger to not having a nice experience with Santa. <laughs> so I saw, I see, I saw that and I was like, yeah, kick his, don't be like, if I saw that, that lady grab my son and pull him like that, I'm walking up there grabbing her and pulling her like that. <laughs> like, like, I'm not going to be rude or, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not, I'm oh, sorry. I just, I, I just said I'm going to assault somebody. No, I'm not. But uh, what I'm saying is like, I'm going to cut it off. Like, Yo, don't touch my kid. Like, don't do that Dude, to him. CJ, assault him. <laughs> I, got, I, got, I need the camera to actually show them do all this stuff to my you know, and I'll be like alright that's why I jumped in no I mean you know if I saw somebody really, my son's like no I'm like look chill and then like well, all these people you know what we'll come off to the side he's not ready we'll wait you know something like that but like even the way I went with my Ben Stiller moment of Santa Claus like I, I was deep in the beast so I realized I was like hey wait a minute what's going on here you know I didn't see I kind of caught on a little bit before I got to the Santa Claus but um, I think I think for for growing up um, the way I was raised and then seeing, seeing this movie, I, I can connect, I can relate to it. You know, I, I wasn't raised, I wasn't raised anything like this movie, but I was, I can relate to it just to being a kid. Yeah. And, and that, that I still, and to this day, I'll, I'll probably keep doing this for the rest of my life, but the, uh, the predicting what you're going to do or hoping because reality sucks. The, the fact of reality, and I can, we can see it so much right now with people just trying to escape online. Um, at, at a high, you know, I don't know if that's a, a high time, high, all time peak because social media is turning on itself. So I know I'm like not on it as much because of the, the all the stupid shit it brings. But um, but like, I think with with the time that it's fr the movies from and you know, at the slow pace, the love. There's there's a love, the heart. Well, there's a love to it. Um, it's not a, it's not a, it's not a uh, what do you call it? Um, I, I think this one now. I think because we did this, I have a more of appreciation for it. But I'm not going to be looking for this one Christmas because I know it's going to be on anyways. I think now when it's yeah. playing, I'm going to just kind of appreciate a little bit more because like, the scenes are the scenes are cute. It's not a it's not a very it's not it's a nice little movie. I feel like I could show my son that this movie now. I can show it to him in two years, three years. I think it's I think it's OK. I think mm -hmm. um, for what do you call it for what you get for, for a Christmas movie? I mean, it's called the Christmas story. Like it has nothing to do with it, it's just a, a story in Christmas. No, you can call Christmas Chronicles a, a, a Christmas story because that's just kind of like at the time. I, I figured with Christmas Chronicles and then the way they use the the, um, the cameras, I was like, oh, they're, they're going to chronicleize every, or everything in the Chronicles or whatnot. And you do that by taking, okay, it makes sense. But it's also a Christmas. It's a story during Christmas. So, you know, it's I like that about that. It's not like you should run your Christmas like this or this is the best way to Christmas. No, this is more like... Hey, look, check out what my family was like, like in the 40s. It's a timepiece. Yeah. It's definitely a timepiece. And I feel like it's always going to age like that. I don't feel like it needs to be remade, so to speak. Unless they, I think they saw something that said a, a, a Christmas story live or something like that. They, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, even the friend flick, like the double dare thing you said earlier, like like that part. Um, who is that? Flick is played by Scott uh, Shorts, and uh, he, oh, man, the double dare show. I don't. I wasn't. I wasn't big on that, man. Like. <laughs> That it, it, so okay so now that we're breaking it down you're right it, the the reality of like he knows he, he doesn't want to get his tongue stuck and he but he knows that, 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 that there's no internet there's no story it's just by pure hey do have, have, you know about this because my first getting tongue stuck on the freezer story is from uh 911 do you do you remember when they had a oh man this might have been early 90s you might have been too little um 911 had a show 
and uh they had it oh, man i can't remember what it's called but it was um this kid stuck his tongue trying to get the ice cream out of he couldn't wait and he, he was in the freezer and he and he got he got uh you know on a stool and he got up and he tried to lick the ice cream but he missed and he licked like the the side of the free, free the fridge and he got stuck and um he had like i can't remember the whole story i'm butchering it but i feel like the little brother he had a little brother and he couldn't talk, so he went and got on the phone, and he and you have you could hear the audio recording. The kid's like, "I'm stuck to the fridge. I need help." You know, it's like he can't talk, and that's a. a, a, a I was like, "Oh my god, it's panicking." The thing I did like about this movie is when uh, Flick gets stuck, you hear that child scream, like, "Oh, that panic!" I was like, "Oh crap!" It wasn't like a fabricated, like a like a, a soundbite. It was actually him screaming like a little kid, like scared. I'm like, "Oh, it scares me," because that little scare. Like I remember being a little kid and something happened in that, mm-hmm. and me scared, getting s- crying like that too, like. It's a, it's a, it happens a few times in this movie where they use the little kid's actual scream and it's just it's like oh god like I don't want to feel that pain of the tongue and have you ever got an ice cube stuck to your tongue? Have you? Ever... Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's yeah. painful and just it. yeah, yeah. all oh, the lip one yeah and you can't pull it off. So I mean he's out there and his friends leave him like that's that's some bull man. You gotta like find a way to uh man like your kids in the forties they just. And did they all stay quiet? He's over there. Like that would have, as a teacher, like, and then her not reacting. I was like, you better react faster. Like, you know, like. Well, what, what I think made me laugh so much was just Ralphie and, uh, oh God, what was the other kid's name? Anyway, whenever the teacher's like, you should be ashamed of yourself. He's just like looking around like, mm-hmm. like he just, he, he plays it off so well, man. Just like, uh, the, I didn't do anything wrong. Like, uh, it's his fault for doing it like that's that's, <laughs> yes. that's that's a that's a good thing too man like you just which is which is ironic it's, because it's, yeah it's not that you necessarily lack empathy you just like you haven't put yourself in that or you haven't had that situation happen to you yet to where you're completely embarrassed you know or you know it, you know what i'm saying it's just like it's almost an innocence yeah but a, a really <laughs> a really uh rude innocence like he's like he's not he, i don't think he really does feel bad at all just because nah. he, he has he has nothing he has nothing to well you don't you don't want to get has, hmm? you don't want to get in trouble no no but you know also whenever you get older like you get that that mentality of like oh man like that sucks for him like you would you would feel like i said i mean hopefully you feel like a little bit of empathy for him and like oh you know that's it's a it's a shitty situation. I wouldn't want to be in there, so I'm gonna make sure he's like out of it. But whenever you're a kid, like you said, it's it's more of the fear of like getting in trouble than it is making uh, sure your friend's all right. Dude, if I see if I see a guy, uh, if I'm walking down downtown and I see a guy stumble out of a bar, fall flat on his face, I'm not gonna run to him and be like, "Hey, you okay?" I'm just gonna assume he's drunk. I've done that before. Hey, good luck. But if I saw a kid stumble out of a bar. And his family, like, wait, what's going? Why is this kid in here? Why is this ten year old in here? You know, yeah. it kind of so. Cries for help are different because, and that that's that that leads us to the, I think um, a point in life where the boy or the girl who cried wolf, those people that cry all the time and and they they cry and they get the attention they need. Like some people show up and like, what's the emergency? There is no emergency, and I I think like for this there was an emergency and they they kept the panic. Where usually I don't know, I'm, I, it's just I think if it well, was also. Hard, Flick, Flick doesn't give him up either. Like he could have easily been like, these, and even after, even after the fact. So I think another thing too is like it would have been lost if they were like, oh, it was us, you know. Flick keeping his mouth shut would have, would have meant nothing. Yeah, I mean, but so. I think, they, but even back then, I feel like in the forties they would have gotten trouble because uh, they all weren't, you know, they dared him. Now I don't know this day. I don't know. I don't know. I'm I'm, I'm gonna have to find these ex- these experiences as I get older and we go through them. But as a you know, as a, the parent on the other end and, and living in the 2000s, um, I'd say it'd be like, okay, what, what, how did this? Did y'all not see Christmas Story? <laughs> it's like, did y'all it's like? That's very easy for me to just be like, did y'all did, did your parents there once show you this scene? Did you not see a very Harold and Kumar Christmas? What happens to your penis if you put it on a <laughs> on a cold pipe? It's funny too. Connection to last week, they had the Christmas Story playing and Harold and Kumar. Um, but yeah, dude. Well, it's funny too, and I don't remember that pole looking that. That pole was oh, gross. Rusted. Yeah, dude. I was just like, oh man. Like I remember whenever I first, like in my mind, it, it was just like a silver pole, you know. And he just stuck his tongue on there. But I saw it this time. I was like, that's disgusting. <coughs> yeah, it looks bad. 
I really did see that note. I noticed that too. I focused on that poll more than I focused on the conversation. I was like, he's really going to put his tongue on that? Like in the, in the movie, not in the, not in the, you know, like acting, but like, I was like, oh God, like you're a kid, you got to step up. Um, I did yeah. want to say that Flick's real name is Scott Schwartz. While um, the character we're trying to find, his other friend, his name's Schwartz and his name's R.D. Rob. But that's funny. He plays you know, Schwartz and I'm Schwartz. Uh, that's kind of cool. Um, well, I guess we'll move on to the, the four Christmases or, Let's see real quick. Let's see what the the money, the cash in. That the, let's see what cash this this Christmas story wrecked in. All right, not bad. I mean, it, I don't. It doesn't have a lot of effects in it. It's a very straightforward movie. Three point three million, box office twenty point six million. So yeah, I can't imagine how much it's made over the times, but that's still seventeen. Yeah, like sixteen see, on, on Wikipedia. Uh, initially overlooked as a sleeper film, it was released a week before Thanksgiving. Uh, 1983, the moderate su- success, earning about two million in its first weekend. Okay, so it got its it got its money's worth because you said it was how much was it to make? Three point three. So almost, you know, got its you know back in the first weekend, which honestly you're not too mad about that. Uh, yes. By Christmas, the film was no longer playing at most venues, but remained in about 100 theaters till January, um, earning just over 19.2 million. Years since there's television airings and home video release more widely, and it's now a Christmas special. Uh, yeah, check, I didn't even realize. Like, so there is a we, we were talking about how it's always playing. There is a reason why it's shown numerous times on television, usually on networks owned by Warner Media, and a marathon of the film has aired annually on TNT or TBS since nineteen since nineteen ninety seven. Titled Twenty Four Hours of a Christmas Story. So that's how you keep your story, your movie alive. You you attach yeah. it to something, and this is, I um. Yeah. And he has to be like Peter Billingsley. Still has to, he has to be getting crazy royalties for this movie. At least I hope he is. Well, maybe he gets it in his contract, but I'm pretty sure he's getting royal chicks out of this. Not just like or or guys, whatever. I don't know what he does, but but like <laughs> just like, for the, I, I was in the Christmas story. Um, speaking, we could easily segue into Four Christmases with uh, good old Pete Billingsley. He has a small cameo in Four Christmases, and I totally didn't ever click the dots till this time around when I was yeah. like. Well, with him and Vince Vaughn working a lot of stuff together. Um, I was not aware. They this. really do. I I don't think they were in May. I want to know if he's in Fred Claus, too, because that was. Uh, let's see here, Peter Billings. So let's just go to his filmography. You, you know what? I, I'm I'm questioning that. Do you think he has a bunch of freaking Christmas uh, archives on his on his filmography? Like, he's who who is that? Peter Billings? Yeah, he's he's kind of. He was an elf. Um, so, but I think it's I think it's Vince Vaughn and John Favreau that he's really good. Well, just with. just right here, yeah, F is for Family, which I, I which it's a Bill Burr uh, show on Netflix, and it's been since 2015. I didn't realize that. But he says yeah. he's a producer for 33 episodes. That's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Uh, that that show's actually pretty funny. Um, oh yeah, <laughs> it's like I'm a piece of shit. <laughs> what? Like, well, I got I got to remember the scene, the line, but I don't uh, want to ruin it. He right, was in so Far From Home. He was. He was in Elf. Let's see. He was a producer of Zathura, which was a John Favreau movie. The Breakup. He was. That's a. That's a. Produced. That's a. Um, Vince Vaughn. Vince Vaughn. And so is. Whoa. The Wild West Comedy Show. Vince Vaughn's Wild West Comedy Show. I think I've seen that, but I honestly couldn't remember. What year was that? It was two thousand six. Um, he was. So Peter Billingsley was also an Iron Man. Iron Man. So he's friends with these guys. Yeah, and he was also in Spider Man Far From Home. Yeah, where what... he reprised his wo- role uh from Iron Man. Um what was his role in Iron Man? I don't even remember him in Iron Man. He was just uh, a throwaway character. He was one of the scientists in Iron Man. Oh, okay. Um that uh was working for Jeff Bridges. And then Spider Man Far From Home, they show of all these people that you know, did Tony Stark wrong, or that Tony Stark did wrong, Jake Joan Hall being one of them as well, and so um, his character pops back up, and he was wanting to get revenge on uh, Tony Stark, essentially. Okay. Um, wow, so but, he, he's cool, he's, he's got it in with some friends, and, he, and he's directed, too. And Yeah, he directed Couples Retreat. Oh, he's reta- he, re- he directed Couples Retreat. I, I like that. I thought that was a good movie. See yeah, uh-huh. that, and and that's that's a, a John Favreau and Vince Vaughn team up again. I want to say, and this for Christmas with uh, I, 
with John Favreau, he he has he's more of a supporting character. But in in uh, in a couple's retreat, I feel like he's a a main character in that one. Oh, Vince Vaughn. No, uh, John Favreau. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and like I said, funny dude, like John Favreau's in Four Christmases. Um, let's see here. Yeah, no, he was definitely a. But even in even in Four Christmases, I mean, he he stands out. That's what's crazy is like in this time he's he's directing and doing all this stuff, but he still has a presence on screen. Like, real quick, I, I mean, I will, let me to cut you off, man. I'm totally cutting you off. I, I just don't. I just want to do this real quick because we 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 do this and we didn't do it this time. Bob Clark was the director of. Um, he, he did Porky's. And we talked about Porky's last night. Look at the connection. He did Baby Geniuses, and and did he do Black Christmas? Really? Yeah, I was looking at that earlier too. Oh wow, wow! He did Black Christmas in 1974, and then in in nine years later, A Christmas Story. They gave <laughs> like this guy knows Christmas, <laughs> like man. Well, uh, unfortunately, he passed away in 2007 at the age of 67. But way to go, Bob Clark. So yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to read. I just I know we always talk about the writers and everything. I want to make sure we give our uh, credit where credit is due. And you did yeah. say that the writer was uh, Jean Shepard. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He was that was that was the person who originally did the. It was like a like a short story in a book or something like that. Okay. And um, so it's either Jean or Jean. I just I'm looking at it from the French name Jean. <laughs> Jean. Jean Claude. Um, Jean Chappard. So, and because that because that brings me over here to Four Christmases, and the director is Seth Gordon. Yes. And let's see, he did Pixels. Uh, his top four on IMDb are Cry Wolf, which is I remember this one being a little scary. Um, the King of Kong, A Fistful of Quarters, and then Freakonomics. So he's kind of all over. The place um yeah he did a uh, four christmases which is uh let's see a couple of struggles to visit all four of their divorced parents on christmas that's the thing i didn't understand about this movie um i forgot that i didn't i was like how do you have four christmases because they mm-hmm. have all the <laughs> all the divorces um and uh what was it? let me start i'm starting all over real quick um this movie's kind of it's it's not like 90 minutes it's a quick a quick one i like it too it's yep. not a it's not it's not very it's go scene to scene um well, when i saw this one i saw this one in the theaters when it came out i saw it with my stepsister and uh i walked in just watching a vince vaughn movie reese witherspoon and i walked out loving a vince vaughn movie and reese witherspoon I got the same effect from year one that I got for this one. I didn't. I I I did see the, the previews, but previews didn't help me out in this movie. Like I wasn't like, oh, I need to watch it because of the previews. I just watched it because I was like, I'm a movie guy. But then when I watched it, I was like, I was expecting maybe, let's say back then the rating was zero through ten. I was expecting like a five or six. So I got like an eleven, twelve. I didn't realize that that this movie really, because um, I. I've, I don't know how to. I I, I really don't want to bring the mood down, but I'm I'm from parents from divorce, so it was really easy for me to slide into this one, and to believe yeah. and to believe the reality is like, I was like, oh, this is a, uh, okay, believable. Well, it's almost like <laughs> this this movie is almost like Ralphie grew up, and then this is him. You know, his parents divorced, and you know, now now we have a Christmas story because you get you you get all that. Um that family feeling too like it, it really does like you said it, it hits that it hits it on the nose it's not trying to be like oh this is a a good christmas movie because everybody's just doing great things and all this no 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 it's like you go home you get beat, beat up by your brothers you know your parents told embarrassing stories and nothing goes right especially like especially if you don't want to be there don't feel comfortable and neither one of them do and they <laughs> that's tone, another thing tone. too yeah right well and that's another thing too that i really kind of enjoyed about this movie is like they have a good relationship before they go to these christmases but it just these going and visiting family i mean it shows all the flaws that you have all the stuff that you try to cover up you know well i um, I, I see it as more like you have your world over here that you live in and you avoid that other world and you don't live in that world. And then when you have to come, this is definitely the fish out of water in your own water you're raised in. Um, So I feel like when you, cause like in a son-in-law crawl, he's not part of 
the environment and you put them in there and then no, these people are avoiding their environment mm -hmm. and there's a reason why and it did i mean they flat out gives you all the the angles and man kind of growing up more and now i've seen this movie 12 years later like i love it way more now because i didn't have any of the stuff that this movie has now now i i tend to have i've gone through a few, a few of the stuff and and uh, the role playing in the beginning is fun. It shows you that they have a good time with each other. They have, and they're very supportive. And uh, I did like how when they're after done role playing because they had their, their the fake names that they that they actually gave you their real names. Um, and the, when they before they go to bed, good night, Brett, and good night, uh, Katie. But then you find out I I heard Brett too, but it's Brad. Brad, yeah, I heard Brett. Yeah, so it's it's Brad. And then and then you find out well, those aren't even their real names either. Like, well, I mean, yeah. well, Kate, Katie's called it Cootie Katie's, and then you find out Orlando, which is, yeah. okay, this, 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 I, I guess it's like a great comedy. I, it's, it's funny. Like, Dude, I was, I was giggling the whole damn time, man. <laughs> have, you, have, you seen, have you seen this one before? Have you? I, I, had, I had. I had seen it, but it had been so long, and I think I just watched it like one time. And honestly, the last time I watched it, I think I just kind of was like, hey, that's funny. But this time around, dude, I was like, I was into it. Like it, it just was, it was hidden. I think, I think after watching Swingers and watching Made, like they, it kind of, it kind of got a little new respect for Vince Vaughn. One that it was already there because of Dodgeball. I yeah. Mean, we're being real. That that movie was perfection. Uh, but yeah, dude, like it just, I loved it, man. Like whatever, whatever they they get caught at the airport, he's just like stammering. It's because he knows. Like he's like, oh man. Like we just got caught. Like he he has that fear about him. And then Kate, she's just like, oh yeah, we're we're doing this. Like it's almost like she's oblivious to the fact that everybody's gonna catch on. I thought that was kind of funny too. Like, oh, because the they got because they were getting interviewed at the yeah at yeah. The... He he just I, I don't think it's it can't be stage fright because he goes in and nails Joseph. You know, it's that it's that fact that that it he got caught. He, he's got to go back yeah, to it. So, like, so... Oh, and I know I know they saw this. You Dude. Know? Put it, put it like this, put it like um, Christmas story. There's that reality there where he realizes like, mm -hmm. oh shit. You know, like there's a, there's what you want and oh, where you, where, uh, yeah. Oh, oh, your foot. Did you say, did you say that? He was like, I didn't say that word, but I use the, you know, you help your dad out. It's, I don't know. That, that, the, from the Christmas story, the scene where Ralphie has to help it. You're right. There's a, re, oh God. There's, there, there's where reality's kicking in. Like, hey, it's no longer, you're no longer a little kid anymore. You know, things are going to start mm -hmm. seeing, I guess. I guess I got a I got a front row seat of a lot of stuff, so I was like, eh, whatever. As you get older, and you, you realize that it's, that the whole thing about the be nice movement, I'm not on the be nice movement. I'm on the be respectful movement, yeah. because someone can be nice to you, but they can still be passive aggressive and be really getting what they want and be putting you down by talking to you really nice because I'm being nice and I really don't like you, but I'm gonna be nice because I have to. I'd rather be be respectful. Do I need to talk to you? No. Okay, we're good. Like you know. I just I don't have anything to say. Just be respectful. I feel like being respectful is a lot, um, a lot better. But I'm saying that because there's a lot of disrespect in this movie towards family members at each other. Uh, I love the ball, the ballroom scene, and the opening. He's like he shows you their happiness. Yeah, yeah. And then, and then the they go two. out and they do stuff together, and they 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 enjoy each other's company. And I think that's a it's a very good setup because their world gets rocked just like that, dude. And then and then you have you have them literally having to deal with stuff that they didn't want to deal with. I mean, they've been together for three years and they, they haven't met each other's parents or if they did, it was just so brief that, you know, it, well, they, I'm sure they, I don't think they have met each other's parents. Have they? Uh, no, no, that's the first time. Um, yeah. Cause I know, I know for sure that's the first time that uh, Brad meets uh, Kate's family I feel yeah. like, yeah, no, and that had to be because he they didn't know because they called him Orlando right away, and they're like Orlando, yeah, no, the, that's the first time they meet. Um, yeah, and then, but they might have met like, it seems like he probably met her dad, and she probably met his mom, because yeah. it seemed like they had at least something there, you know, it was like, oh, where's Brad or you know something, because the mom, Brad's mom seems more reasonable than his dad. And then well, they, well, they seem to be the opposites. Dad. That's the thing, dude. Yeah. Because they they seem because so so Kate's mom and dad seem very similar, and like you could see them meeting at a country club, at a at a at event at a Christmas meeting party, or uh, you know, where uh, Brad's parents like how the fuck did they meet? <laughs> like where? 
how do they like like it's like a hippie dippy lady and this like conservative it's literally like a liberal conservative and a conservative liberal Mm -hmm. like and that's something i've been working on as one of the characters uh, in my role (laughs) but and and what's funny is like so in in brad's parents it was the oh i guess yeah okay so his mom was uh seemed like a little bit of a philanderer and so did kate's mom you know it's almost like like she was jumping, she was probably jumping around whenever. Uh, well, I have, I have a theory. I have a, I have a theory about that. You do? But okay. not a fan theory, just like a, a, a I would call this a, uh, maybe a uh, asshole theory. Cause it's kind of, it's kind of a dig thing I'm about to well, say. And, and you really don't get a lot of John Voight. I mean, you don't really see oh, a lot he's of just at the very end, yeah. He's just at the very end and you see that he's like, he's come to terms with everything. Like they, they had a daughter or grand, a grandkid and they're like, all right, you know, we're, we're we have to get, get along together and we got to get along. Whereas uh, with Brad's family, you don't, you don't get that kind of resolution at all. I think I could really get, uh, other than the, the extreme, the parents, but just the vibes, I, f- I fit right in with uh, my dad's side being like, you know, the Robert Duvall side and then my mom's side being, I could, I, I sense that. Same. that pirates and ninja thing i like to confer the compare you know you're a pirate or you're a ninja cats and dogs kind of the same thing you know i feel i feel like i'm like in the middle like uh i'm a dog but i was raised like a cat so i'm kind of like it's kind of like a, well, i don't understand really what i'm supposed to, but they treat me like a dog i don't understand this um i did like there's a the, the, there's the the cameos we have the two nice little cameos of um what's his name kevin from the uh, brian oh, uh, bum and harder I, and yes, cedric and uh, Cedric Yarbrough, Stan, yeah. um, they play uh, uh, Reno nine one one. Reno nine one one. So we got we got we have two uh, improv. I guess they're improv actors. I think or stage actors um, on in this movie that I really like. They I think is so the office had already started right for for Brian uh, Baumgartner. Oh yeah, it started in two thousand five. Um, so, and he was he was already kind of picking up steam because man, Kevin's probably one of my favorite characters. I actually in my notes I have Kevin all caps with like uh <laughs> exclamations on there i was like i did not know he was in this movie even if it is a little little part and they're just like talking about how much they hate christmas <laughs> oh god thinking, yes they talk yeah he, he's he's kind of like because you see the cedric character i mean what's the name in the movie you see uh because stan is brian's name i think and Cedric no it's that stan eric is brian's name uh stan's character is like the the he's he hates it kind of thing and he's fighting mm-hmm. for it but he's not going to win and then uh, eric's characters were like i've accepted defeat like but yep. I, I will say you don't you don't get the kevin uh, as in uh, office kevin uh, huh. uh, you get you get more of his own little version but you can feel him a little bit i didn't meet him i met him in 2019 i met him in san antonio at big texas comic con i always like to ask especially uh, stage and improv actors that made it to television or film i like to ask him how the hell like like what like i just ask advice like what do you and, and him he was cool because he was actually he went from uh, you don't you, you don't see like you see the Brian person and he talks to you yeah. and then and then he'll he'll play a little Kevin R you know you, you, he does a little character for you and you're like oh so you that's a, you learn he gave me really good advice about uh, just being on good sets uh, being on just working with other actors because they they said they had stand ups they had acts people that had been in action movies people that had been big production people that only been in stage like they were just like the office that's why it works he said it works so well because they were saying if you're a part of it you'll 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 stick you'll stick out and you'll i mean not stick out but you'll 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 get it and you'll you'll work with it and, and if you don't you don't it's okay but that's how they let they had like an open door thing he was trying to explain to me that just mm-hmm. kind of like everybody kind of had a shot and also listening to patrice o'neill on the opening anthony show rp patrice um listening to him and then having him uh, comparing him as the Craig Robinson character, and like that they're both going for the same roles, but the fact that the Craig Robinson char- uh, character, the way he can play him a little bit more, I don't want to say sappy or cheesy, but kind of more likable, where Patrice O'Neill is more raw, where they don't really. Uh, well, and Craig Robinson just has like not deadpan really, but he definitely Patrice O'Neill is a lot more animated. And I think that's probably why they went with Craig Robinson. He needed somebody who was like, okay, I can deal with Michael Scott. Whereas if you had Patrice O'Neill, I mean, even in the show with his character in that. Um, he's more angry. You know, like, like, yeah, yeah, exactly. He's not as calm. Like he's not used to dealing with idiots. Whereas um, Craig Robinson, Daryl, he is. Um, well, let's put it, put it this yeah. way. And the Herald, a very Harold Krumer Christmas, uh, Riza and the other guy that played the, the tree salesman, like um you know it's kind of like the like 
you have two guys that are playing stereotypes and if you switch mm-hmm. them, you know, if one can't really play it the other way. I feel like Patrice O'Neill's character for The Office is he's a little bit more, I mean, they portray him like that. He's a little bit more yeah. like, like, like off. But if you were to look at those two guys and you were to tell me that the Craig Robinson guy is a little bit nicer than Patrice O'Neill character, I'd be like, yeah, I can, I can see that. You yeah. know, I can, I can, I can. Not, not to say, I, I think Patrice O'Neill could have done a great job. I mean, he, uh, <laughs> he, he has one line where he just says, damn it michael yeah like, and he just, like he, he he nails it dude like but it's it's i i think he totally could have played craig robinson's role i think that craig robinson was just a little bit more suited for it. I think he's and, a little too too craig robinson you know that was perfect yeah and you know um what was it oh man Oh, wow. I do, I do like, I do, I do like hearing off screen where he goes, "Damn it, Michael!" When you hear it off, yeah. off shot, it's funny. Off screen, it's funny, dude. It is, dude. So, fun fact about uh, Brian, I think it's what'd you say it was? Oh, actually, I have it here. Um, Bomb, Bomb Gardner. Gardner um, yeah. He is. The, so you've heard of Cameo, yeah? Mm-hmm. Where he's he's set to make like a million dollars this year on Cameo, just just from Cameo alone. Um, because nice. people love his love hearing from him because i he feels like and you've met him before so correct me if i'm wrong he seems like a really down-to-earth guy well um the the real per- personality yes his per- um and then when he jumps into kevin oh you just he, he's, you like love him like it's like this he's got this like yeah he's like oh i have i got his i got a signature um i got him you know make him out to my son but i have i have that one uh in my um my wall i have like a wall that has like the signatures from the, you know, I get my celebrities and whatnot of my actors. Mm-hmm. I have them for my son and uh, I have his up. I have him and Stanley. I have their pictures up because they just, they, yeah, Stanley, Stanley, um, what's it called? De- De- Leslie David Baker. He's, yeah. um, God, he didn't break character with me. He stayed as Stanley. No. But he gave me real life advice as Stanley. <laughs> so it was funny, dude. <laughs> like, and then we think about it after I come back. Um, I I've had the because I barely got into the comic cons or the the cosplays and all that. Um, the expos in 2018. I I always was interested, but I never went. So when I started going, I was always like, uh, you get you know, it was like a kid in the candy shop. You don't know you're gonna just try all the candies and you're gonna break some whatever. But now as you start going, you start learning. I like talking to them. I'm like, if I'm paying this money, let me get a question. Let me get something I can get out of you. And uh, I just try to see what I can do. And uh, I remember he gave me like just make sure you do that and uh, you're going to want to make sure that everything is signed all the q's and t's are like i think he, yeah he said all the q's are crossed and all the like he used like a different word instead of like i i's and t's he used like uh like y and, and x or something but you know just talking to them and, and uh and you said cameo um I, I did get me a cameo i have my own i got me a, not, not me as a website but i have i mean as a, an app but i got um ct fletcher have you heard of him why does he's, that sound really he's just he's a he's a he's a motivational youtuber he's a he's a he was a bodybuilder in the 90s he uh he owns a couple brent uh curling records but he he's got a bunch of motivational videos he's um i like him he cusses a lot he's direct and i got me a three minute and 37 second video of him telling me off i love it <laughs> i plan to do something with it so we'll see what let's see where it go uh but it's it's do you get to like keep it and like record it and everything like, oh hell yeah it's, it's something that's yours I think well the way I work is um, I download everything to my personal hard drive, mm-hmm. just in case the iClouds go down. Like all these episodes are all like everything. Um, so what I did is yeah, um, it sent it. Uh, you sent it on Cameo app, and then um, they reply within a week. They have a he replied like in three days, which I actually got excited when I got, I got the the notification. I was like what what because I because it says there and everything's a business when you just remember anybody listening anything you do is a business. And there's always anything that has to do with business. There's always going to be a loop, some kind of thing they can get around. Something it's it's just, it's just business because you got to protect your everyone's money and, and uh, the way they look at things. I mean the way the it affects people. But the fact that um, Cameo will tell you you have up to seven days if they there's no guarantee that they're going to give them to you. So when you get when I got the three three day notification, I was like, oh, I thought it was going to take a week. Um, they basically send it to you your to your Cameo app um, on your phone. You play it. I think it stays there for like thirty days or something. But what I did is I got on my iMac and I downloaded it to my computer. And then I, because you can, there's a part that you download. I don't, I didn't download it to my phone. I downloaded it to my, my computer. So I'm pretty sure you can download it to your phone. Um, I'm pretty, I don't, I know other way apps work and memory wise, they're not going to, I don't think they're going to let you keep it on the app forever, but uh, it gives you your own personal one. And it's him just talking in the, talking to his iPhone, telling me off. 
It's like, that's all I need. That's all I need. It's a, it's an experiment I'm trying with uh, mental health. And I think, uh, I think I like, I like what I'm doing with it, but let's get back to the movie Orlando. Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, I mean, uh, my, my, my name is uh, CJ, you know, it's Carlos is my real name. I mean, well, I've been CJ since three months old, so I don't know any other name. And Carlos, yeah. Carlos, Carlos is my, my real name. So, you know, if you call me at, at this age, in my you know, mid thirties, if you call me Carlos, I just know that one, it's either, either we worked with each other and you heard my name, like at the restaurants, they do that to me all the time. Like they print out my name, Carlos, and I log in as CJ, but my ticket, they're like, oh, well, you're Carlos, you know? That's another, that's another thing that used to piss me off about, um, like friends in Austin or people, coworkers in Austin, when they find, they're like, oh, your name's Carlos now. I'm like, no, it's not. And then, and they're like, I go, no, I'll go by CJ. Like, I don't, don't throw me off. But they'd be like, oh, we're going to call. I'm like, no, don't, dude, that's like so disrespectful. Someone tells you their name and you get to call them. But, so uh, I'm just throwing that out, I guess, because it itches. But, um, but uh, what do you call it? Like, um, that's, that's, that's my name, but I've been CJ since three months. So if someone calls me Carlos, it's either I worked with you, went to school with you, or you're just, you're a family member that remembers me from a little kid. But even at that, you don't call me Carlos because we're a little kid. You call me by my full name. So, you know, I don't really take it too offensive. But, but my friend Brad here, which I thought was Brett, uh, but my friend Brad here, he does not like his name. He went all the way. And the way he does it, he changed his name. Mm-hmm. Anyway, he's a lug- that was my name. My name's Orlando. It's, it's, it's Brad now. I'm at the part where he just showed up to his dad's house. Um, the, the interaction between him and John Favreau. Uh, it was a Tim McGraw, John Favreau. Oh, and, uh, Tim McGraw, dude. Yes. <laughs> he's like, so John, John Favreau's more, they're like MMA brothers. But they're like, they're like the low budget, like the, mm-hmm. the backyard wrestling MMA. And they just like, <laughs> It's like it's just so funny how they kick his ass. They kick um, they kick. Oh boy, he 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 does the arm. John Favreau does the arm bar, and then he gets up and throws up the dollar like to tip him because he like. <laughs> I think, I think uh, whenever the kid comes in, Google me, bitch. Like Google me, I lost what? it, dude. Like he's like, what? He's like, why don't you Google me sometime, Barbara? <laughs> dude and i i like that is like your your kids are gonna be a lot like you even if even if they try not to look like you there there's a lot of you in them um but yeah that's that that part cracks it where they all get in on it like they all just start kicking this go go me what go go me bitch <laughs> um <laughs> you dude he he's oh, man i can't i can't tell you how i i relate to this brad character like and i'm, and I'm not trying i don't go back and i try to be like Oh, I'm sophisticated and I'm I'm well spoken and I'm clearly I'm not. If you followed this episode 19, you know who I am. But um, but you know I don't I don't go. I am who I am. I'm real. I've, tried, I've been like this since you know I was a kid. I've, I've matured. But but uh, the way I but I I don't I go back to like I don't go back to like fighting like this. It's just more verbal, and the, you know the way they they they're hard on him because that's the way that's the way they were when he was kids. What I'm trying to say is he's been gone for so long that they only remember him from when there was a kid because he's been gone for so long. I've been in Austin for, I'm already going like on 17, 18 years and I still go back home a lot, but it's, it's, uh, it reminds me instantly why I live in Austin. <laughs> I go back after a couple of days, I'm like, oh, I, I, I can go back home in Austin. But, <laughs> but uh, I mean, I, you know, I'm, I'm okay with, with it. When I was younger, it didn't bother me as much because you it's a lot more drinking and hanging down and shooting the shit. But you know, now I take my son down. I'm like, oh, I got a purpose. I can't just, can't just you know be responsible and pull the shit to the side just i gotta i gotta be in the moment but with them but him going through this and then her like i can I relate to both characters um mm-hmm. katie and and uh, brad's um experiences i don't like i said i'm but I, I i'm not a person that fear i don't i don't avoid if you're walking this way and i'm walking this way and we have to collide then we have to collide if we ever we're, we're mature enough to walk past each other and not say anything great you know, it's like, I don't, I don't like drama. I don't like the, because even the part where she tells him to step up to his family, like, oh yeah, that works in their city. It doesn't work. Yeah. It, it doesn't work where they're from, you know? Well, and you know, what's funny is like, from, they, they did a good job at like staggering it to where it was like your dad and then my mom and then your mom and my dad, like they did a good job of splitting that up. That way, you know where you're at and you kind of get a little bit better feel. Um, but I feel like Kate was a lot more, I mean, even though it didn't work out well, she was a lot more supportive of Brad at his family. Like, you got this, you know, like, but then whenever he got to her mom's house, it was just like, oh, look at that. Is that a, is that a man? 
or is, or is that is that is that Kate or is that a, a teenage boy named Bjorn? Like, <laughs> he's not he's yeah, he's not supportive well it's it's oh. it but but uh and and he's uh, just he's he's eating up what they're they're putting out too like they're they're constantly making fun of her and and you know, so and and he feels empowered by it because they're just like oh look at this man even the grandma dude like, oh god the, real, real quick on the google me bitch part i like what tim mcgraw says oh, tag me in dad tag me in. i can't i lose custody again <laughs> <laughs> like, I, I can't i lose custody again and the grandpa's the one that chased it but oh, i like uh on. what what is john favreau i think he did uh he says a um i was a, i think he's denver <laughs> we're named after all the that the, the, the were made were conceived in or we were born in i don't remember what the like because so, so they got laid <laughs> sometimes they got laid uh, um <laughs> of dallas is denver this is ben, orlando <laughs> but um yeah, right. but even the the john favreau character when uh tim mcgraw uh, was in the dallas kicks him uh orlando in the leg He's Orlando to me now when he's at home. Uh, when he gets kicked in the leg, um, he falls down, and then um, Denver grabs uh, Brad's leg, and he pull, pulls pulls mm-hmm. him. But he says, "Welcome to the act of God. Hey, welcome <laughs> to Thunderdome. We got a little kind of little similarities there. Uh, oh, but, you know, a little so, so you know even even that part. Oh oh man, because I'm I'm at that part where they're where they're fighting. Um, the the ten dollar limit <laughs> gets a flashlight." <laughs> Oh, you love me. <laughs> I mean, it's, ah, dude. That I love this scene, man. Like, it really shows you how. I mean, they like the connections there, but it's just money. Like, money shouldn't influence your decision. You know, to. I don't know, man. It's kind of it's kind of hard oh, for me. You there? Yeah, you hear me? Wait, you froze. Uh oh, I think we have a pause. I think something happened. He is frozen. I'm gonna have to carry this whole episode by myself now. Oh, he's back. <laughs> I'm back. I was saying, I'm gonna have to hold this episode all by myself. Sorry, man. <laughs> Let's finish it off like another 30 minutes alone. <laughs> oh, you're good. You got it. Uh, uh, but uh, it was it was saying my internet is unstable. Uh, I, I don't normal. have my normal. Yeah. Uh, uh, I, I mean, internet. I love I love and she's she uh, uh she's named Susan in the movie. I, she's John Favreau's wife uh, uh Dallas's wife. Susan is Dallas's wife. Um I'm sorry, Denver is John Favreau, Denver. Her name is Katie Mixon. Dude, she has a show now on the I don't know if it's still going on, but man, she's one of my favorite like her, her performances, the way she comes into things, the way she sells herself. Yeah, here we go. She has American Housewife. It was uh, four it was from t- 2016 to 2020. Uh, but she was also in I can't remember what the damn but she's in East Down and Bound. She plays like is this she, kind. Of, okay, that is her. Yeah, I, I thought it was somebody different, but yes, no, I yeah, I, I like her as well. I'm trying to find the movie that she was with Chris Pine and uh, Ben Foster and and uh, ¿Cómo se llama el otro? Um, uh, Jeff Bridges. It's called um, where is it from? I can't believe I know this movie so well. Like, yeah, her, 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 she started in 2004. Oh, it's, uh, is it Hell or High Water? Hell or High Water. This is a nombre, yeah. She's, it's not on her, where is it on her? IMDb, it better it's like be here. Her, it's, it's, her, it's her first biggest known four, right after Four Christmases. At least on mine. I don't have it in here, dude. I have, I have Then Comes Marriage, The Quiet. It's, yeah, that's where I'm at too. Blind Dating, Reinventing the Wheel, Finding Amanda, My Name is Earl, The Informers, Four Christmases, Small Town News, State of Play, All Above, All About Steve, uh, Seven Layer, Holiday Meals in a Flash, Two and a Half Men, Take Shelter, Robot Chicken, Drive Angry, Wilford, A Little Something on the Side, Psych. Why is this not on here? I'm on the same thing. It's, uh, it should be. Oh, here it is. You know why? Because I'm dumb. Because I'm dumb. It's right here. Because it's in between. Mike and Molly, and it has it has, but here it says 2016 slash Roman numeral two. Why does it have that in there? I don't know. Anyways, she does a great job in this movie. Um, I mean, a lot of her performances, she 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 does tend to get that. Where is she from? She has that Texas accent down, or that. Oh, dude, I I don't think she's from Texas. She's from Florida, down. Pensacola, yeah, Florida. Florida. That makes sense. That's like yeah, it's the South, yeah. Yeah. Dude, she does a great job. I I love I love her in this. And then <laughs> the part where uh, where I want to go from um, I mean just jumping over to when he goes back to seeing uh, I guess let's just go in order. I don't want to jump because you're right. It does. It's it's better that they did um, Brad's family than Kate's family than Brad's family than Kate's family opposed to just sticking to Brad's family than sticking to Kate's family. Coming from a divorced family, 
I have to do this. Yeah. And I have to go and it, 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 like, it gets exhausting. I've been doing this since I was a kid and I'm still doing it now. I've been driving since I was a kid. So, so um, you know, drive to your dad's house and drive. To, my, my dad's, they have it early. My mom's, they have in the afternoon. And you're two places at once and your, your family doesn't realize that. You know, why are you so tired? And it's like, hey, what are you lazy? I'm like, no, I just spent like eight hours fighting at my dad's house. Now I spent another two hours here fighting. Like, it's like, you know, it goes, it goes back. It's like, it's exhausting. But I mean, you, you do it because I guess you're supposed to or you care. I don't know. But uh, I, uh, I got to say, man, like the way they, they capture family, they don't, it's not like, it's not like they're over here making fun of like, low income and high income and stuff like no they're just showing you this is a glimpse of how it looks like this and this is how it looks in the other house and then being able to go and myself going back and forth <laughs> to see it i'm like hey they got it pretty much on the they got it they got it on the on the on the nail hit the nail on the, on the target uh this movie was we said seth Gordon. what's up Kevin, it's it just reminded me of back to the future it's like you hit the nail on the head you hit the nail on the target like <laughs> it's like it's like it's that's as funny as a screen door on a on a battleship. On a uh, submarine. I mean, it's a screen yeah. door on a submarine. <laughs> oh, wait, did you say it on purpose or by accident? Because I think that's how he says it, right? No, yeah, yeah. It was just, I said that on purpose. So. Okay, because he said you're... Make like a tree and get out of here. Well, I, like I always say the boondocks one, why don't you make like a tree and shut the fuck up? <laughs> because he's right, but it don't really work. Um, I mean, it's just the communication things I see here where I... I it's just everyone's the, the, you can you miscommunicate with your family a lot and it's all you're you're i mean i had to learn that myself i was like why do i get arguments with people in my hometown and, and people in the town i live in now why is it why or just simple conversations and it's because you're the hat you're using where you're living isn't the hat you're using where you live you know you gotta and that's why some people stay away i'm not a guy that stays away i go back i you know, if there's a sign that says CG is not allowed, I'm like, I'm going to find out why I'm not allowed. And then I run out yeah. being like, I remember why I'm not allowed. <laughs> it's like, it's like, <laughs> but you know, it's like, I, I'm like, it's, it is, it is what it is. Um, the, I, I like the way they give Kate and Susan's interaction. Like she's been in the family for a long time. Like if she's trying to understand, cause this might be her family soon, you know? And uh, yeah. the way Susan just kind of takes like she's just like normal. My nipples can't feel them. And it's, it's also scaring Kate into having children. I mean, into not having children, you know, like she's like all this stuff she has to go through the body change. And, but you see, you see Denver's in love with his wife, with Susan still because the damn card game, but I don't, I really don't want to jump into that yet. I, let's, let's, uh, let's move into Susan's. Uh, I'm sorry. Um, Susan, let's move into Kate's family because uh, have you ever had the opportunity of maybe meeting a, a family like that? Where the women are just all over me? Mm -hmm. uh, no, no, I have not. I mean, um, as you can tell, they're older, so you know, attraction yeah, is out yeah. the window. But they're still. I mean, yeah, I mean, I've. I just have a beautiful face, so that happens all the time. I see so that. if I run, if I run to a family, it's not anything that's abnormal. Okay. You know. I see. So uh, no. I mean, I'm, I'm talking about like you've ever, you've ever gone with a friend to a friend's family meeting, or you've ever gone with a girlfriend, or you've ever gone with a. I've gone. Yeah, I've, been, I've been to a lot just, of scenarios. Just where, like just to where you're like not really uncomfortable but like they're they're obviously kind of coming on to you it feels it's not, it's, yeah. it feels like are you throwing this out there because even she says it when uh when the grandmother says oh big and strong oh oh she winks at him or like mm -hmm. my belt my belt stays on me and she's oh for later and it's just like like i yeah. I, I've, I've been a i've been in a few scenarios like that at where uh, where I jokingly, when I was younger, I jokingly was like, "Oh, we'd be you're you're 25 years older than me. Like we'd, we'd make a great couple. I'm only 21, you know. You're 46. It'll work." And then the 46 year old was like, "Well, we should date." I was like, "No, I was no." So I learned like <laughs> to not joke around about that because uh, some people take you serious, you know. Watch what, and uh, I was like, "Well, I'm a, I'm a I'm a I'm a jokester. I play around a little bit, but there was real no no uh, there was no uh, I was joking, but you know." when you do go to an, a family like that where everything's on the, on the table, <laughs> everything's allowed, it kind of throws you off a little bit, but he does, he fits right in with them. I mean, um, he really, he really does like, and, that, and like you said, like with, uh, with Kate's family, like he, he's basically on their side and she's alone again, but that's yeah. women though. I feel like that's what women, like you have to play a strategic game where you see at Kate's house, they, uh, I mean, at, at uh, Brad's house, they physically beat each other up. But they don't really have a conversation where Brad's trying to have a conversation. Where at Kate's house, they uh, they have more of a conversation. But like, is that passive aggressive talk? Or like, I'm gonna talk like that. That's what pissed me off about Kate's family. 
that they yeah. hold they 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 do that whole passive aggressive bullshit like oh uh oh, I, I mean i can't even from the beginning like I, I don't even know where to begin with the passive aggressive like just right away like well give me a hug like she walks in the door and doesn't even know like oh it's my mom I'm supposed to give her a hug. i don't know if you're supposed to i mean i don't i, I have that family where i'm like well, are we supposed to hug or is a high five what are we doing now like where, how pissed off are you at me today or like this week or but uh the, the one thing i gotta say is they just i'm not trying to pick on women and saying that i said that earlier but but what i'm trying to say is like just in that in her in her family which is predominantly women they hold on to old shit and they bring back mm-hmm. all your old shit they bring back all, just to, just because i i'm not doing what you're doing i guess or i don't i don't know where where, where does that come from like where does that <sighs> no clue like where does I mean, what the the ant? There's an ant here. Is it? Uh, Carol, Carol something in real life. Colleen Camp is that the? Oh gosh, what's her name? Well, I thought there was a, I thought there was a, a, a one of those actresses from the eighties. Um, what's her name? And yeah. uh, she's she's in uh, Princess Bride. It's Carol Kane. That's her, right? I'm ninety percent sure, bro. Give me one second. When did that come out? 2008? This movie? Yeah. Yeah. I think Chris. She's uncredited. That's why you can't find it. Okay. Yeah. There she is. All right. Yeah. I was like, that's her, but she only has a small little cameo, like that small little cameo. But I was like, Mm -hmm. hey, that is her. She's why she's in this movie. Um, I mean, even the the way she's like, oh, I can't, I can't stand. I have the baby. Oh, that's Brad here. And she hands it to the to the boy to the husband. Oh, Mm -hmm. he he's playing video games like that that's just the other male fluence we have in here and it's just that guy sitting because you can't even even me being raised by women and going to other places where it's just women uh what do you call it predominantly i still i'm put in my place so like you know either way i'm not and also i don't want to be part of a lot of the conversation so like i'll just sit here and play the goddamn video game watch the kids and shit i i prefer to play like you know imagination world with kids and and you know uh, adults have like they have intentional conversations to put someone down where a kid is doing it by accident well, i'd rather be around the kid be like talking to you know, hey he's just talking mess for an adult i'm like you're an adult look what you're saying like you know you, yeah. you have control of that but she also says oh we're having i think we're having another kid she doesn't even inter- interact with her husband doesn't introduce him really like she does she says his name but she's like the sister's like very like i'm still i gotta get, get some weight but i can do it where the other do- where, the, where kate's like i don't have any but you know, like her sister's like waiting for her to be like a mom, I guess, so she can be in that scenario where I don't know, I might be looking too deep into it. What do you what do you feel about their the relationship? I think that we're talking about Kristen Chinworth, right? Mm-hmm. That that sister. I think that she she wants Kate to go through it. I think she she's probably the only family member that is actually like I know she mentions Cooey Kate and all this other stuff, but she's she's actually concerned about Kate. You know, she's, she's like, that's, that's her family member. Like she may, like they grew up together. They're around the same age. Um, and she just wants to see her happy. And I think she, she like feels that she wants a kid because I mean, after the first interaction, you see her kind of holding the baby and even though it threw up on her and everything like that, you know, she's still just like, oh, you know, I wonder, I wonder if we could have a kid and stuff like that. So I think she, I think she's just, just kind of picking up on that. And I think that, yeah, no, I mean, I think, I think that that is the only family member in Kate's little, little family there that is actually looking out for. You think so? You think Courtney? You think her sister? Yeah. 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 I mean, she mentions Cootie Kate and she, she does that little passive aggressive thing and everything, but whenever Brad's not there, she's like, where's Brad? Like she's, she's concerned about her. She is. And she's, she's kind of like in her life. And even though. Well, I mean, cause uh, I think, I think starting to interrupt but i think for for her like uh putting all her shit like that out i don't think that's that's like not well intended she just wants no. to put her down dude like cootie kate's and then she brings up and he brings up all those pictures of the dyke like they're like look look how she used to be look look at this because think about it she's been gone for so long and she they don't have any new material to talk about her they don't have anything like and they're still living the same lives so they're going to bring up all this stuff because there's, and I, I'm, I'm, I feel like I personally know what that feels like. Cause it just seems like I haven't been around you in 10 years and here you are. Yeah. I'm on social media with you, but we're not, it's not the same. And, you know, but um, I just feel like that the sister is kind of like, look at me. I'm like, uh, I might, I'm, I think I might've been around too many women in my life or right? I've seen this scenario way too many times where it's just like I'm not getting the same attention. Yeah. It feels like she's the one that's not coming on to Brad as strong. 
Like she she does she does her little. She's like, oh, and you, well, I take that back. Whenever they first meet, she's just like, hello there. You know? Yeah, like she's because she stands up right away. Like, yeah, and, and then uh, and then with the uh, with the baby, I I didn't even realize that Kate uh, has already held. She holds a baby. She held uh, Susan's baby, which hit the head, and now she gets thrown up on, and that mm-hmm. okay. And in Brad's defense, I'm I was like that before a child. <laughs> I was like that, but now that I've had a child, I have to clean up all these smells and stuff. I'm okay, but uh, before the child and before. Uh, if I was in a scenario like that, I would be like, I oh, got it. Because even that, even at now, I will still go. <laughs> yeah, because you can't do it. I'm gonna do it. You gotta get out of here. So he, he like he kicks her out, you know. Um, but uh, but that being said, like if that were me, I was 21. I would definitely be all like, mm. now at my older age, I'm I'm gonna be more like, okay, hold on, let me just puke and I'll be right back. Or even I'm just like, whatever, I smelled worse. Like I I think I, I'm at, I've convinced myself where I'm like, nah, I smell worse. Like I don't. They say shit. Like formula. Like nah, that ain't nothing. Um, as you get mature, I guess you get older. Uh, but uh, you know, and, and I see the transitions from this movie itself, <laughs> and uh, even the way they because they, they're gonna put Kate in the bouncy house because it's a traumatic experience. But yeah. um, oh, see, okay, so, so they're having the conversation there where she brings her the clothes. I think maybe she's trying to be well intended, but she doesn't mean to. I think she's she's I think she's really just. Yeah. But also too, they're one on one. When you're one on one, you're not acting like they're acting. She's acting. Maybe maybe you're right. I'm starting to see what you mean. What you mean about she means the only one that care about her, but she puts on a show in front of the other ones. So that's what yeah, I'm saying. She still has to fit in over there too. Okay, I get like you. I, I get what you're saying. She's got one in the middle. Yeah. Yeah, because only when they're around, she's gonna be this this hardcore mega. I have to because I have to. I have to keep my guard up. But when they okay, I get you. I'm. I, I stand here and I understand where you're coming from. I thought it was like, well, wait, she does all that, but I forget that she does have the one-on-one. And but she even Kate tells her like, this is the only clothes you can bring. So yeah. so the, and all the people. Well, and it's it's like if she did anything less, then they'd be like, what are you trying to do? You you on Kate's side now? Yeah, you know, I like, see that they turn on her. They, yeah. But also, so I think, but the was saying about the transition, they're showing her go from the little girl taking the freaking EP EPT test. The pregnancy yeah. test and then taking it to the, the bounce house where she has a traumatic experience that she has to go through i kind of I, I wrote down that's when i first started writing my notes was like is that like ptsd for like an adult kind of version you're going through and you have to kind of step up but they but her outfit she was wearing she couldn't do that with the with the black so they had to switch her into it so she can get it like but you know her throwing the kids around was funny yeah i, I was well, like oh and i think that's one of the notes i have down here too is like whenever she was with brad at his house she was like you got this like she had to hold him up whereas here she had to do it herself like she was like all right now like she she put she put his big boy pants on and she Mm -hmm. put hers on for her herself you know like you kind of see this is kind of where they start to not fall apart because they don't really fall apart i mean it's it's a it's a lapse in judgment when he's just like well i guess you know i'm leaving you know and I mean, yeah he, no he, he turns on her like he turns on her real bad a haircut doesn't lie haircuts don't lie <laughs> like he thinks <laughs> like he's just a boy named york like he shows the the the, the fatness see they're bringing out on her like because he doesn't know any of this stuff and they're bringing it all yeah. out and there's five women around him like that i mean I don't, i'm i'm not speaking for everybody i'm speaking for myself but in this movie when i saw that scene where i was like oh i've been in that scenario and i live from that i come from that scenario so I was like, okay, well, yeah, they kind of like that. And, you know, it's 2008, and I feel like they're more mature back then than they are now. So I'm pretty sure it's 2020 conversations are even worse, even if you're aware about it. But even, like, the little girl pisses me off, the little brattiness, like, mm-hmm. God, that, 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 you know, like, parents leaving their kids to do whatever. I'm like, oh, I got to make sure I show them, you know, show you. It's hard. It's hard. You want your alone time. You want but. But the holidays is, is the time where all the shit just hits the fan, I guess. And you're supposed to kind of just, it's family. Your family don't go anywhere. You just move on the next year. Uh, where else do I got here? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Bjorn. <laughs> like, that's the, that's the smart ass things. I, 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 I think I've gotten from Vince Vaughn as a growing up watching him is, uh, you know, when he starts talking about, he starts defending himself. Like, I'm like, I'm kind of like the, <laughs> like, yeah. wait a minute. Like, yeah, no, no. Let me see how that goes. Um, uh, what were they saying? Oh, yeah, because. It's like at this point in the movie, you're bringing out all the skeletons in the closets and the spouse's uh, skeletons and they're, they're coming out of their closets, but they're not even like bad. I think it's the fact that they don't really, they know each other in this other world and this world that they created, but they don't know each other in real life. So they're just showing who, but I, I guess, does it matter who you were and who you are? No, like if, if uh, you're not. No, 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 no. Because I mean, you're, you're going to change over time, no matter what. I mean, you, if you're growing 
you're you're doing good so you're going to be changing yeah um and they they changed in what into what they wanted to be and it's not like i mean they have to live with their past regardless but it's easy to forget about it you know um and they're they're all there's they're shaped by what the past was so I don't know where I was going with that. No, you're, you're trying to avoid that. They're trying to, trying to forget about those memories and you're bring, yeah. they're bringing them back up. But like myself, I always feel like uh, whenever my family does this to me, that I'm, I'm one, all that stuff is like 20 years old. So it's fun for me to be back on when I was a kid. And two, it's like you, the shit y'all did last week, I can totally, or you did two days ago, I could totally, <laughs> that's like you're an adult and you're doing this shit. I was yeah. a kid. You know? Well, I, I, I've realized that, and I, I don't, I don't tend to do this, but the older I get, the more like, cause whenever I was younger, my siblings were older than me quite a bit for the most yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you grow up and then like, you just, you hear things and you know what's going on, but you don't really comprehend it. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. it's not, but you remember it. You remember what's going on when you're young and it's like, oh man, I could roast my siblings so hard. On a lot you, of you're observing yeah you know just just because like i grew up around it like i remember things there's there's stuff that i that stuck with me over the years and it just was like oh wow you know but i don't because it's oh. just like you know like with me if if you really get me going if you really want to have a good time i'm going to go through for the throat like if i i'll win like if you if if you it's just like I I have that one in my arsenal that I always know I got, so I'm just like all right go too far, like I don't <laughs> I don't uh, I don't ever use it I just yeah. want to say like yeah, I the, don't. The more we're talking, the more I realize how similar we are, and it's yeah. just like I'm like I'm I'm actually the guy that they bred me to be like this, and I'm like you guys get mad when I come back, and you guys bred me like this, like I'm like exactly. I, I I don't even exactly, have man. I don't even have one in the chamber. I'm just going by the interactions we had like for 15 minutes, like I'm like look at this yeah. shit. Oh no, no, I can do that too. But like, I just, it's, it's, I think that's one thing about me that I just like, I have that one that's like, all right, for, for each person, it's just like, all right, this is, this is the kill shot right here. Like, I can, you, you think, you think you can, you can be mean. Oh, I'll, I'll just take you down a peg. Boom. But, you know, so, I, like I said, it's, that's, that has never happened. I, I have yet to bring up anything that could, we're gonna have to we're, we're gonna have to do this a, t- a trial run to see what happens, man. I'm I'm need to see this up, man. <laughs> uh, but... No, no, no. It's, it's 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 not something you can come back from. It's, well, I uh, it's one of those, like I said, I like I said, I'm not a very tall guy. I'm only I only stand five foot eleven, a little under six foot. But I grew up around yeah. people that were a lot, lot a little bit shorter than me. So when I was getting bullied on when I was a little kid, it was like uh, you know my older cousins that are not much tall, you know, but they pick on me a lot. And I grew up. And I'm not a bully by my, by means, and you know I'm not gonna I'm not gonna mess with them. But now that we're older, and they they get me in a situation like I'm like okay let's let's do this. Let's uh I'm not even I'm like you want me to leave, but I'm just I'm, I can, I'm used to this. Come on, let's let's start talking about you. Come on, it's like I get I'm like it's like that immovable object that the more you throw at it, the closer it gets. So just leave it alone. I do that I do that technique where I'm like I want to make you feel real uncomfortable, real fast. Yeah, and you want to yeah. fuck with me? Come on. I don't care what I don't care what it is. Like if I know that you're a homophobe, I'm gonna get real close to you. Talk to you. If I know that, if I know that you're, uh, you know, if you're got some kind of bigot, I'll just start, start like, I mean, you, you hang around people all the, all the, all the time in your family. I said bigot, but I'm not saying I associate with myself with them, but you know, someone acting like that, you know how to come at them or a friend of a friend. If you're a friend of a friend, like, yeah, I'm, you're, you're still on the, on the, on the chopping block for me. If you're gonna, if you're hanging out with that person and I know you hang out with that family member of mine, then you're still on the chopping block. Um, it happened. I don't know, man. Roasting each other, coming at each other. It's just, I guess it's family bullshit. I don't, I don't look yeah. at myself and get up, upset and look at you and be like, oh, I should be doing more. Like, no, I'm like, I should be doing more. Or I should be doing, you know, I don't, I don't, I don't look at it as like, why did I mess up? Or how come there? I don't, it's just, that's jealousy. And I just, you don't get anywhere like that. You could use it as an emotion, maybe to motivate you. But um, I, I think I see a lot of the, I don't know who I, I relate. I, I relate more. I think I'm literally down the middle 50, 50 with these characters. I'm, yeah. I'm, I have to deal with the Kate and the Brad shit. And I'm pretty sure it's not I'm talking to you too. Like I'm pretty sure there's a lot of people that have to go through this and um, mm-hmm. man, uh, just jump ahead a little bit. I, we're running we're, this time. We, we do young Ben. We, do must, have a time we have a time limit today. Cause young Ben must go to work. I was supposed to do it uh, last night, but uh, yeah, we got a little, I got a little detoured. 
Um, hey, but hey, I, I fell asleep too. So let's talk. <laughs> it happens. Let's talk about the 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 um, Ted Nugent. No, it's not. Is it not Ted Nugent? It's a um, uh, sissy. Um, uh, sissy Spacek. No, no, the, the 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 priest. Uh, the father. It's not. It's Ted. No, it's not Ted Nugent. It's a um, no, no. It's Dwight Yoakam. Dwight Dwight Yoakam. Damn it! I didn't want to look that up. I was supposed to know that, dude. He does. He is. And by the way, he does have a lot of uh, movie experience. By the time he got yeah, to this movie, he so he's play, a natural. Bro. He was wedding wedding crashers. Like, I think I've. Oh, and Crank and Crank too. Mm-hmm. He plays I've a doctor. All of, I think I've named all of Dwight Yoakam's. Uh, <laughs> I think I went through his filmography. Right dude, there. he's got a lot of stuff in the eighties, dude. Dude, yeah, and um, you know. Guitars, Cadillacs. Get down. <laughs> I don't know if that hit or no, oh, no, dude. that's no. That's Brooks and uh, that's, 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 that's Brooks and Dunn. Brooks that's, and Dunn. Uh, it's like guitars, Cadillacs, good feeling music. So oh, I will, God. I will tell you, I'm, I'm uh, being from Texas. <laughs> so, so yeah. being from Texas, um, I do listen to country music when it's playing. I don't seek it. There are a few that I do. There are Brooks and Dunn. I do George Strait, Garth Brooks. I have, I have my my you know you grew up with, but. Um, that being said, I'm not a big country guy, but the only reason I found out why I need to learn country was because of the women. So uh, I was like, whoa, because when you go over to Ciudad Acuna, Mexico, and you go over to the Corona, the Corona Club, they got women from South Texas, South, uh, Southwest Texas. They got women from West Texas there. They got country. East, they got country. Well, those women, um, when they like a gentleman and they see them, they're going to want to talk. So you got to figure out a way to talk to them because they come up there. Well, with me, they're very direct because I'm, I was always scared. Now it's different, but back then, you know, it's, but uh, they, I'm like thinking about it. I'm, I'm in this bar uh, hanging out and listening to country music all day. So I mean, all day, but every time I come here, so I'm thinking there are a few country songs I'm comparing to that. Like, oh, I like this. one. Oh, I don't like that one. Oh, I mean, I do know how to square dance and shit, but you know, I am a Texan. So, uh, but I'm saying, what I'm trying to say is like I, you, you country music, you know, um, it's country music, man. It's uh, it, I, I don't like it. It's like when people make fun of um, like cumbias or like Mexican music like that. I'm like, hey, it's it's you it's, it's, yeah, taste or you don't, you know. And uh, I like uh, I like country, but uh, you know, Mr. Um, <laughs> Dwight Yoakam, he does a great job. <laughs> I do like the fact that the mother they make it seem like the mother's putting him ahead of the family, but they're already older. So it's kind of like, let her do her own thing. You know, I'm kind of like, yeah. like, let her do her own thing. If it would be different if they're teenagers or in their early twenties, but the character for the mom, like everything he says, well, I, I got to Like she's dating the, I guess for this small town, I guess it's a small town. Like yeah, dating. It seems like it's a big, it's a big venue, but not really at the same time. Like it's, it seems like there's quite a few people there. Also, I don't mean to be mean to Dwight Yoakam, but Mary Steenberg, I mean, even in, in this film, she is very good looking. And I don't know if Dwight Yoakam could pull her. I, I imagine it's the personality, just like his his presence is really what draws her to him. You know, like he's he has that power and he has that. I'll say that, that uh, uh, charisma. Charisma. That's what I'm looking for. I got I got to tell you something, my my brother. Um, there's a uh, things I've seen in the uh, this world and life, and um, money is always gonna do well for a gentleman looks yeah. side money but if you don't have any money one thing that i know that will totally get the woman and will get the girl is confidence yeah, confidence and, and, and humor oh brian brian oh, you see this chick <laughs> his girl Dude, she is she is good looking man. so when you have all three of them uh personality humor and money you can you can get yourself a really high end <laughs> i don't know what to say man i don't i don't i don't like i don't no, know what to no. call it I don't know what to it's say, fine. but, but she, cause the mother's already well off because of, well, from her first marriage. I see, I don't even want to go into this. Like, is she, is she the one that made all the money and they're living off of her? You know, I don't know what's going on in this world, but let's just say. The only one that's really kind of clear is Brad's parents. This one is very ambiguous yeah. because she's living in a very nice house and so is the father. This is true. Comparatively. Yeah. Cause even, cause even Brad's mother lives in a decent home. She doesn't live in an yeah. expensive one. And, and, but she's more like that. Uh, you know, hippy dippy, like yeah. we're gonna eat vegan stuff. And oh man, whenever whenever they go over to her house, and he's like, "Hey, bud, how's it going? You kids we'll talk, doing okay?" We'll talk about that. I just and then, talk. And then, and then he's like, "You were my friend, Daryl. You were my best friend." Yeah, like, dude. Just, just the delivery on that. Dude, I dude, that whole scene. I was just gonna talk about real quick about the Jesus. Uh, the no, he's a. Uh, 
He plays Joseph. Joseph. And uh, and he go and he gets in the character like he like he just kind of <laughs> he only had one line and he couldn't he was like I gotta deliver it and then he's like uh, he's like Kate you're lying you're lying but then even like that I'll do it. he has the damn the the shout what's it called the uh, the the cloth on him yeah so like, the cloth. swallow yeah so he can't do it because he has it but then he takes over the whole thing like she can't do it so she has performance anxiety I guess like she when she's put in the spot like it bothers her and he actually he excels at it so every time somebody brings up something he's like ooh and this this part is the uh, he's like I know my wife <laughs> she's I might not be the father <laughs> so he talks about but I know the guy like he talks about God <laughs> God you like it's like she's cheated on him she cheated on him but he's okay with it because he's the father because he's kind of raised his son. He's gonna raise Jesus. <laughs> it's like he gets, he takes it. He, he does it good. He, yeah, he does that like just taking it too far, which is like I said, this this is a funny kind of parallel because like in the beginning of the movie, you have them behind a camera and he just like freezes. But like I said, I think it's because he knows he's caught. Like I think it's because he has been hiding from his family. It's like, oh man, here I am. Whereas she has no problem talking. Like either yeah. time. Whenever they get they, the camera, and who who lets the camera crew just fuck in <laughs> on people? Yeah. You know, we're live, we're live. Like, oh no, get that well, they, that even got me too. Like, they just, like they're trying to turn around because I guess they're supposed to walk out to the exit. But um, I just noticed this is I don't know. I have I've never noticed this the first a few times I've seen it till now. This is the third time Kate has held the baby. She held Susan's baby. She held the baby. She held her sister's baby. And then she's baby held Jesus. the baby Jesus. So I don't know if she holds any more babies after this, but that's the three babies. So this is a recurring theme here that she's doing. So maybe it's just trying to show her like, this is what a kid's going to be like when you have, and it is true. Like you, you I, I'll tell you this with your, uh, I don't know. I keep saying that true, but I'll tell you this with, with, with children, your, your friends, I, I, I decided to let like that friendship go of all those unwanted acquaintances stuff and just focus on my kid. Cause to have to do both is it's gotta be hard. You can't take your, kid where your friends are out all the time and your kid's growing and learning so it's like you know you kind of i just be like you know i just i like my kid a lot more and i'm gonna put more time into him let's do this so that being said you could see i feel like uh with uh brad's upbringing because we're about to get on the we're, we're, sorry i didn't mean to bring it back but i wanted to talk about the the joseph seed i want to talk about pastor phil because he's supposed to be like a badass but it's just like he's a pastor now we're going into the scene where they're gonna go meet brad's uh brad's family brad's mom and uh, I didn't realize it. I saw this. I've seen the movie like three or four times, and I did not realize it till this time. And it clicked in my head because after we did Swingers, I was like, "Who do they bring back? Patrick Van Horn? Wait, he's Daryl. Who is he in Swingers? Was he, he was the uh, what's his name? Um, ah, uh, he he had a he has a Sue, a boy named a, a boy named Sue. That was Sue. Okay, okay, all right, that makes sense. All right, cool. So, so what Ben was saying before I cut him off, um, very, very viciously, because he's bringing up the scene of uh, of of Brad and, and Kate going to meet Brad's um, mom and her boyfriend, which you come to find out is his best friend from when they were kids. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll just do the scene again where he where he, where he goes to where my best friend. <laughs> Listen, I didn't have a sexual thought about your mom until I was thirty. <laughs> It feels like it feels so natural the way this scene falls up, like how your friend could actually fall for your mom. Like I don't know, fucking what the fuck, man. <laughs> how was the drive in? You know, like, Did we get you gas. Did we get the gas, but like he's trying to be an adult. He's trying to be like a dad. For you. <laughs> that, yeah. I make more money than you. I make a lot more money than you. Hey, bro. <laughs> Dude, this is like a beautiful scene. This is okay. Did you ever see the movie Disaster Movie? Yeah. Okay, I have to rewatch that one because I remember it was, it was horrible. But the scene, there's one scene in there that I broke out laughing and I don't care who was laughing. Was, I was laughing with the eight people in the theater was when they talk about, oh, they're doing the meet the fuckers and they're mm-hmm. saying, oh, he lost his virginity to the maid and it's a guy. <laughs> it's a guy. <laughs> like, this is that same laugh I got from this movie where I was like, holy shit, it's his, it's his friend. But even the way, even the way Daryl looks, he's trying to look like an older gentleman, and he's a younger guy. Like he's trying to have the dad, the dad bod, and hey, sport, how's it going? Like, he's just like yeah. so pissed off. <laughs> I, I don't I mean to correct you, CJ, but I think that was a date movie. Date movie. 
Yeah, yes, with yes. Uh, with Allison Hannigan. Yes, yes. Sorry, that's the one. Yeah, date movie. See, yeah. I don't even know those damn. They all look. They're all the same. <laughs> Dude, they are. No, they had like superhero. They did. It was like scary movie, and then they just took it to it took, every yeah. other. And it, like scary movies, like very tiptoe ish. Like it, I mean, scary movie itself, the original one, maybe the second one. But after they went to the third, fourth, you know, it, it got to get a little slip. But but these these cats, when they started making those movies, they got like scary movie five and they're like okay we'll take it from here and run <laughs> so like yeah. instead of going to like the, the scream or scary movie but <laughs> so i have the scene yeah, on right now like the way like imagine like, like you got high school friend of yours or your best friend and dating your mom in your 30s or yeah, your... vince vaughn just plays it perfectly he's like you were my best friend girl like he just he is so pissed <laughs> and then just... whenever he's getting buzzed by his mom he's like and you you don't buzz me like i'm trying to tell him <laughs> God, he does well he does it so okay so that's this scene alone reminds me of me the most interacting with my family not the, not the daryl dating mom but the the part where the, he does the buzzer and he's trying to play it and he's doing it all rough on the mom and then they turn around and do it to him where he's like i'm like what are you doing like that's why i get like they big fun of me a lot for that <laughs> for that shit where i'm like but then you know I, I i it took me a minute to click that i was like oh yeah denver and dallas is our our orlando that's the mom oh that's why john favreau's in this scene which is probably my favorite scene from the whole movie and honey don't don't eat that brownie that's mommy's that's grandma's special brownie like the, the bud brownie <laughs> yeah uh i'll tell you oh because yeah because even like trying to play a board game with uh, i guess the uh, latino <laughs> it's like it's like trying to play a game you, you don't attack each other it's like supposed to be fun but it always ends up happening but there i am trying to delegate the rules and everybody's like i will play the wrong way i'm like no no and then i and then i slide off a little bit they're like hey you're not supposed to be that. like i'm like damn it <laughs> like you know it feels like that but i love this is one of my favorite scenes in this movie it shows you the connection that you have with your spouse with your significant other like or you know mm -hmm. you can have this you can have this the scene where they oh god that the what you pour on me it's brown chocolate no 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 <gasps> syrup oh i would not mess with that and he's just like oh it's just cringy the whole time like it's so like he knows he knows this going into the house you don't see brad get affected till he sees his mom like it's he sees him you see him showing up like when he's showing up to his dad's house like that's harder for him getting his ass kicked is, is he's like because yeah. he's like if you want to say not, not if you want to say uh mistletoe we'll get out of here mistletoe oh you said all right we'll go like he really he didn't want to be at his dad's house but he he was at his mom's house, not having an issue until like he's go as he's going through the issue. Like he's just like, Ugh. like it's cringing for him. Uh, who do you think he'd prefer to be at, his mom's or his dad's house? Uh, his mom's, because he was raised by his mom. Yeah, that and uh, John Favreau did not try to whoop his ass at all. Yeah, but he, I mean, but he don't get me wrong. Like you got to see Daryl there, but I mean, what? At least he's not coming out of it with any broken bones or anything. You know, I don't know, dude. What's, and, what's, and she, what? she calls him Brad too. Like they wouldn't even call him Brad. They just called him oh, Orlando, Orlando. And Lando. You know, like they the they respect. have absolutely they have no respect for him. Absolutely no respect. And at least over his mom's, like she may not respect his wishes of like, hey, don't date my old high school friend. But she at least respects him enough to like let him live his life. And she's like, respect me enough to let me live mine. You know. Yeah, you're right. You're right about that. The, the disrespect, that's, that's hard. Um, yeah, because I do, because even if I were to have to pick between if I'm, if I'm Brad am I, or Orlando, I'm more Brad. Because I'm, you're right, I'm going to go with my mom if they're not, if, even if they are being the way they are, like, it's not like my dad's. Where I blatantly tell you, like, hey, can you not be disrespectful and chill? And then they do it, like, because you say that. And then and the next time you don't say it and they realize, oh, it's in his head. He wants us, we're going to, I'm like, why the fuck you got to fuck with me? Like, I'm just standing here. Like, I'm just standing. I'm not even talking. I'm just standing. So, you know, you as a kid, you realize, like, okay, well, you're going to get fucked with it. Wait, hey, I'm here. I'm about to fuck with everybody. And then, you're, then it's, like, older versions of them where I'm like, damn, I missed the, the part where it was supposed to be good when they were younger. Now they're all older. But I, my, this is my favorite scene where they do the card game, Get the, the guesses, like, flip the tube. Flip the tube. Like, he's trying. I'm going to kick your ass. <laughs> so I, I wanted to write down. Um, as he goes, uh the capital of china hong kong so what you find on the, on the side of the of my dresser sock it's like gross and he gets it right um what, what i need the other day when i got when you got drunk alibi <laughs> you got drunk, like, <laughs> he, goes, he says um he says something else a mini oh mini oh something i can't wear at the at the at the truck rally mini skirt yeah. and he says um he says uh, one guy that you'll let me let me go with who's who, who's the name of that guy I, I didn't get it i didn't write it down fast enough oh 
I can't. I can't remember, I can't, I can remember the actor that one. And then he says, Mexican dude, Ricardo Montalbán. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mexican dude, Ricardo Montalbán. Wait, Ricardo. The way she, the way, Mexican dude. Dude. Like, like, just the way she says it, too. He gets it. Um, yeah. So let's see. That is probably like if you if anybody gets to watch this movie, the humor of that part, just the re- the relationship you see, that of you knowing somebody, because they get it down. I I do like the chemistry between Vince Vaughn and Reese well, Weatherspoon. I even like the damn chemistry between John Favreau and and Vince Vaughn in this one. They, like John Favreau is just a a a cameo lightly character in this one, but has such a big impact on Vince Vaughn on on uh, on mm-hmm. Brad's character. Like uh, you can't buzz me. I'm not playing. <laughs> you can't buzz. I don't have the card to play. <laughs> uh, so we're so we're running low on time. We got 15 minutes before we have to get off. So as much as I still love to talk about this movie, and we could probably bring it back because this is this is kind of a quotable movie for me in certain parts. Oh, uh, yeah, Google so, me, bitch. That was Google. one. That I, I totally I totally <laughs> forgot about that. Honestly, they, even like the camera angle they do. He's like the kids like right in your face. Google me, bitch. Um. But, uh, well, we are coming to an end of 2020. Um, I like the fact that we're ending this one with the, the maid guys, with the <laughs> swinger guys. I mean, even though we brought back a boy named Sue. Like, I didn't even think, when I saw it the first time, didn't even, didn't even register. And then I seen it over the time, didn't register. And this, as, soon as, I, as, soon as, as soon as we got up to the scene, I was like, oh, damn. It's it's freaking Sue from, I know, I know it's him. I know. And then he walked, because I'm starting to connect. Everyone brings back their old actors, old friends. I do that. And I'm yeah. like, oh, okay. There's a reason why the universe, the the film, the the cinema universe is so massive. Like it's, I would just say, throw as many darts as you can, see what it hits, because eventually you'll something will pop up. Mm-hmm. And that's what my technique for 2021 is going to be. But if only uh, they had uh, Ron Livingston here, it would have been full circle. If they put Ron, um, like, like some kind of like yeah, like, some other character, okay, yeah, yeah, throw him in there. Um, but uh, I time to let's talk about this one real quick. We still we're, we're, yeah. we got we got to talk about this one for the uh, let's see. It was okay. It was eighty million budget. I want to say there's more actors were the cost of this movie, <laughs> yeah. but but it it freaking yeah. Because by the time those actors are got to this movie, they're already worth a lot. But it made one hundred and sixty three point seven million according to Wikipedia. That is a lot. That's not bad. For for a Christmas movie with you know it's that's not bad at all. That's a, that, yeah, double. I'd say, but it was eighty grand. Eighty grand is a lot too. I wanted to bring up real quick. Um, Brad's mom. It was, it was Sissy Spacek. She's yeah, supposed she's to Carrie. Carrie. She's she's Carrie. There you go. I'm like, why, why does her name stick out so much? She's Carrie. Look at that. Look at that. You, you throw that. She has one Oscar win, another forty one wins, and fifty one nominations. God, look at her. Yeah, she's killing it. Well, I think she was in Fried Green Tomatoes too. She was in a quite one. a few movies. Yeah, she's done a lot of stuff. She's gonna be like a uh, Gloria Leachman. Hopefully, we start to get into that that um, voiceover movies and uh, you know. So, but this is from two thousand eight. Yeah. This, this has been a minute. She's from Quitman, Texas. Hmm, that's cool. Really interesting. I, I've never heard of it. If it's Quit, if, and Clyde. Well, the main character oh. in that one. Uh, I'd say um, that possibly. So, eighty million. I mean, it's a lot, but like I said, it's probably. But they 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 made double what they put in. So yeah, that's a that's a good movie. But let's go to the ratings of these two movies because we are running low. Because I'm, I'm we're gonna see what we're gonna do for twenty twenty one. Yes, yes. So uh, right. a Christmas Story got on IMDb got a seven point nine out of ten, out of one hundred and thirty one thousand five hundred and six uh, votes. Let's see what it got on the IMD. I mean, on the Rotten Tomatoes. Huh? Almost uh, okay. almost uh, yeah, eighty nine and eighty eight. Uh, the tomato meter is wow. eighty nine. It's certified 89? fresh. Eighty nine. Yeah, and it got an eighty eight with the audience. But I, I have to be nostalgic, dude. Like, I oh mean, yeah. Don't get me wrong. It's a. I I have it rated pretty high too, but that's that is crazy. It is. So unanimously like yeah I'm, I'm always against the the tomato meter um i'm i'm, I'm like i said like I'm, I'm i'm sometimes we fall together and we fall on, on the same thing but a yeah. uh, christmas story critics consensus says both warmingly nostalgic and darkly humorous a christmas story deserves its uh, status as a holiday perennial and nostalgia is not dark humor it's not dark humor at all this, what we no. have where, we, where we're at now in dark humor this is not dark humor at all this isn't even cheesy 
A Christmas Story is not corny. It's not cheesy. It's cute. It's it's lovable, but it's not it's not like hey we're a family look at us hey this is how we need to be oh I go to Santa Claus and I had a bad day now my what's my what's my everyone is listening what's my Santa Claus story oh I gotta go take another fucking picture with this asshole he's not gonna smile during the pics and he's gonna <laughs> fight me okay let's do it I'm, I'm I'm ready let's go I'm gonna try to be as professional and mature as this is possible without crossing any lines let's go you know with with this this I I like this movie I'm not in love with this movie. It's not gonna. It's not gonna probably be in my top hundred, but it's a good movie. Yeah. Um, eighty nine, eighty eight. That's almost spot on. Fifty seven tomato, and it's always some. It has to be smaller, but fifty seven tomato meter, and then the two hundred eighty five thousand nine hundred eighty one for the audience. Um, yeah, they're about the same. This would be. I feel. A, I feel like the reviews of this movie when it first came out were not this good. You know, like I think, if. Yeah. if we, if we if we were to ask critics like in eighty three like is you know is this eighty nine percent of the movie is this a B plus movie I don't think we would get that reaction I think this would be a very just looked over movie at first and then it develops that cult following I would like to I think I think we'd like to do a little bit more research with this when you're right I would like to um what do you call it ask somebody older than me that watched this movie at the theaters and get there i have some people in line that's we could talk about this movie because um to me it's maybe back then like i said over the years i've glanced at it I've seen it in bars in a bar and grills and whatnot um it's a good movie i'm not in love with it i didn't have the nostalgia even though i saw it i didn't have the nostalgia with it but i think as a filmmaker and as i'm watching this and tell a story for my son like it's it's, it's easy i can easily slide it in I don't, even when he shoots himself with a BB gun, I have no idea because it's not really that bad. He just you see the shot and he hits. It. I, I don't. He breaks his glasses, which is worse. Which to me, yeah. as a, as a guy that wears corrective lenses and wears glasses, that I would have been like shit. You know, like you know, exactly. Like, I, I can only see as far as my arms. My arms are long, but they're not that long. Um, I do want to give a little shout out to Melinda Dillon, the Mrs. Parker in the movie. She does a great job. A very lovable mo- mm-hmm. mother. There's three mothers in this movie. Oh, sorry. There's. How many mothers do we get? And we'll combine both movies. We get three mo- three moms. I mean, if you count the grandmas, you get a couple more. But <laughs> for, for, for mother figures, like she does are really good, especially for 83 and you see 2008, how mothers have, have come a long way. Like compare compare the mom, Kate's mom, then you compare um, Ralphie's mom. Like, you know, I would prefer for my mom to be at home. And yeah, she's not yeah. the most attractive one on the hood, on the, on the block but or the neighborhood, but you know, she's, she's caring, loving, willing to put time into her children. You know, that's, that's a lot more for me. And, and, and Melinda, she did, uh, Dylan did a really good job portraying that. I'm reading this in so late, but I, I'm seeing her name right here. And I wanted to give her a, um, a little shout out as, as her performance. Um, but I think, what are you reading this? Uh, I can go first if you want, because I think. I'll go ahead and knock it out. I'm, I'm reading it at 12. It has a it has a nostalgia factor for me, man. Yeah, it's one of those it's one of those Christmas movies that you can put on every year, um, and not get tired. And there's a reason why they put play it for 24 hours. I mean, mm-hmm. you uh, there's been times where we watch it and then we'll watch it again. It's one of those you can have on in the background. It's like a it's like that picture of fire going on in the oh, background. Oh yes, like you, that's you, a beautiful you know, analogy. Like, yeah, it's that's just a- like it's something it's something you know that's going on. Uh, and I do, I do kind of have that nostalgic feeling for it too, because like it is something that we would put on. It was something that my my sister, whenever I went down to see her for a couple Christmases, like she put TBS on and that would play almost all day. You know, we'd watch we'd watch football games and stuff like that too. But, okay, I guess I'm stupid to say, but keep going. <laughs> no, it just it was like <laughs> that's that's why it has a twelve for me. Is like it's it's a solid movie. It's an hour and a half long, which is surprising because it feels like it's about uh, three. Slow pace, yeah. You know, and um, but I'm I'm gonna give it I'm gonna give it credit, man. I mean, it's for a Christmas movie, it's a twelve. For a regular, just a normal movie, I'd give it probably an eight or a nine. Yeah, thank just you. For, just for just for just for like a movie to be a movie, yeah, I'd give it an eight or nine. Just because, I mean, but the whole Christmas theme to it really pushes it up for me um, and gives it just like, like I said, that Christmas movie, it's a 12. I mean, this is one, this is one of those movies where you can be like, hey, have you seen a Christmas story? And nine times out of 10, you're going to get a yes. I wonder, yeah. I, I, I remember I used to get that with older people. 
I wonder what the younger people, I need to, I wonder, like, if you ask, like, my brother or someone, I, I wonder if they, they'd say yes. Like, someone that's, like, I, my 18 right ooh, now. Maybe, because, like I said, you have streaming and everything. So, mm-hmm. if it's not on the streaming service, there's a good chance. Yeah. So, with TBS, when, I mean, whenever you were growing up, you had, you had cable TV, you know? And that was one thing that, you know, it may not have been, you know, you couldn't watch it when on your time, but if you caught it, you could watch it. And yeah. with this one, man, you could you could literally catch it all day. So that's 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 why it's a twelve for me. That's a great that's a great breakdown, dude. The the like you said the fire screensaver because it's 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 supposed to be warming. It's a little placebo, like it, but it looks nice. If, if you had a real one, you hear the crackles, you hear the smell. It's I have a fireplace. We might be cracking it open today just to get some heat in there. Just to, you know, it's just a beautiful thing to do. And I'm a pyro, so you know whatever. Um, that being said, uh, dude right before i so side by side has changed my view of certain things my view is skew on the way i see things in um i would start off with a seven i have no nostalgia factor with this i had no but i, I knew it wasn't going to stay at a seven i knew after talking to you after breaking it down after starting to see your point of view starting to mix with mine i gotta go i'm gonna go on at a seven with this because i have no attachment i have i i think it's just a it's a great movie but i don't really understand the, the the fact of it and in 1983 like i said anything before me I'm, I'm always like uh but i give this a seven talking to you i knew it jumped it up to a nine but now after like you're saying christmas movie and everything it's a 10 with me solid 10 overall even for a christmas movie i mean i i would if i had the nostalgia thing it would be a 12 but i don't have it i don't have any uh, i'm straight up just as a filmmaker as an actor whatever just creative watching this it's it's a great lovable movie um i love like i just said like I love seeing Mrs. Parker being nice and, uh, you know, like it was a great, it's a great thing to just see, like your environment doesn't have to be beautiful if people you're around make it beautiful. And I like that I got that from this movie and there's a lot of things or even when you're, yeah, I don't, there's nothing I want to change. I wouldn't want to change anything about this movie. Like I want to say the brothers need to be closer or the dad needs, no, there's nothing. It's, it's a timepiece from 1940. I'm not going to change it. Not being said, because it's a timepiece from 1940, it gets an extra like point or two for me. The fact that it was made before my my birth and I and I'm starting to give it more respect that I'm seeing it now and, and it's been around so long. It's a Christmas movie and it's got I, I'm I and, and seeing movies pass over the time and this one's still alive. Yeah, I'm gonna give this more more. more I might do just th- that that right there. It's been alive since 1983, and it's still being aired. Now. Yeah, now it's an 11. I'm I'm moving up to an 11. It, the 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 shit that this movie has gone to go through, especially now with people getting so like caught up in like you know the way you were raised or movie like just just a goddamn movie man just watch a movie and see what you get from him it doesn't hit you it doesn't relate to you sorry you know but uh but if i was watching this movie for free oh hell yeah i'd be like okay cool if i had to pay ten dollars maybe you know think about it but but uh but like i said like this is a great movie i got i got it's an 11 man it it, just by talking to you and just seeing all the the good qualities it has i came in with a seven because i was like "Eh, it's it's a good movie so i was gonna say eight I, i was saying seven for dramatic but it's more of an eight and I was like, I know I can get to like a nine or a 10, but now after it's, yeah, it's like an 11 for me only because all the stuff that it survived, all the stuff that is, oh, I think I know why, sorry, I saw the movie playing and I just, I just realized something. I just realized why Dwight Yoakam's character is all in love with the, with the women because he doesn't just have the mom. I, I didn't realize that. Sorry, this is totally, I have the movie playing and he's sitting like on the, ca- he's sitting on the couch and he's got all the ladies, around. they're older, but they're all over him. I was like, no wonder he's here, you know. And it also is also good to have the John Voight and the uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't know her name. The the mom. The, oh, it's only uh, two. Uh, Kate's mom's real name is. Uh, this is basic. No, um, no, Kate's mom, Mary yeah. Sting- Stingberg. Mary Stingberg, yeah, her. Like, well, so it's only her and the other daughter. So I thought, it, but he's like, he's got these two hot, attractive women older on him. So he's like that. But you know. She does a great job, and you see the difference of the mothers. You know, sorry, I'm, I'm gonna go mm-hmm. back with the Christmas story. I just looked at it and I was like, no wonder wow. he's all there because the other husband's all passed asleep on his wife. So, but uh, yeah. you know, Christmas stories, um, it, it's it, I recommend it I, for, for sure for Christmas. Oh yeah, uh, let's jump into four yeah. Christmases real quick. Okay, so four Christmases. Let's see on the IMDb. Oh yeah, I just realized we got we're running low. Uh, <laughs> it's got a five point seven. Wow. A 10 out of 64,856 views or votes. And so uh, on, what's up? You said 5.7 on IMDb? Yeah, 5.7 IMDb. Okay. We found out it, it grossed uh, double, 80 million, and made, made 163. And the Rotten Tomato score is. 
what, what I expected. It's probably, be, it's probably gonna be terrible. If you, do you want to take a guess? Uh, I'd Ra- say sixty-eight. Okay. For that's, the critics. Okay, and how about the audience score? Uh, I would say seventy-two. You're very generous, and I know it was it was your Merry Christmas birthday, and you're being you're just handing out a lot of love, but dude, tomato meter. <clears throat> For Christmases, uh, critics' consensus, despite a strong cast, which I we found out, the sour holiday comedy suffers from a hack, hackneyed script. Hack, it's H A C K. Hack N E Y. Yeah, it's hack N E Y E D. Hackneyed. What is that? I have no idea. That's a confusing. Why don't, why, don't, why don't you use the word from this century, bud? <laughs> why don't you use a word like good or yeah? <laughs> I don't know why you're doing this hack nine. I mean, that's really like just to let anybody listen. It seems as I'm, we're making fun of it, but why would you use a word like that? Like to show that how distinguished you are for leaving it to a 25% on the rotten tomato. Well, I got a, you know words. They got a 25. <laughs> oh, I, I know. I know. Broken 25. Ones. I got 25 on tomato meter out of 100 and 145 votes. Look at what, look what, um, uh, a Christmas story got 57. So that means they're they're So what I'm understanding is they, they want to keep it low because they want that number to be high where this yeah. one, they have 145 people and they said they gave it a 25. Get the hell out of here. Audience score. You gave it like a 70 something. They got a 47 yeah. with the audience score. Well, I'm sorry. Out of 254,626 people. I'm sorry that y'all can't have divorced families. I'm sorry that you can't see what it means to go like it. Fifty percent of these people know exactly what's going on. They just don't like that they got made fun of. <laughs> All right. Um, so <laughs> we're gonna. I'm just gonna jump in with my score. This is an eleven. This is a solid eleven. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Um, if you're yeah. watching this this year, like I, I definitely am gonna put this on my Christmas watch list, uh, just because it made me laugh so damn hard. Uh, it just, it's like Vince Vaughn, man. Like he, he'll, he'll brighten my day most days. Uh, you know, I, I can see this is 2008. Like you have Vince Vaughn and what you would call his prime with dodgeball and swingers and maze yeah, yeah. and all this other stuff. And then you see him come make a Christmas movie with Reese Witherspoon, which honestly, I think both of them did great performances. Yes, man. like they did I, 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 everybody had a great performance in this movie. You really felt it. I mean, you have Robert Duvall, Sissy Spacek. I mean, these are these are actors that are distinguished. And one thing that kind of makes me feel better about that is like I feel like those kind of actors aren't just taking. Uh, aren't just taking roles that they think, oh, I can make a buck out of this. They're taking stuff that they like, you know? Um, yeah. They're like Robert Duvall. I mean, he was in that movie Kicking and Screaming with Will Ferrell. I mean, if he thought that shit was funny, then obviously yeah. there's something to it, you know? Yeah, if he yeah. thought this was funny when he read the script, there's something to it, you know? Like, there's there's something to this movie. And if you can't see it, I mean, that's your own damn fault. But these, these are people that have been in movies for, you know, longer than some of these critics have been alive. So they, they have to have some sense of like, and I mean, it grossed, it, it made, you know, double it made back. Yeah. So, I mean, there's something to it, man. And just because like it wasn't hitting on every single point that you thought, I mean, I thought it's cool too, because like it breaks it up. I mean, it's what an hour and a half. No, it, I think a little bit longer, but you have four different times. Like, you know, it's like four different segments and i i enjoy movies like that where they're you're like okay this is going to get broken up into four different things yeah yeah i enjoy that anthology style yeah exactly except it's not an anthology it's like you you spend the whole day with them and it feels like it feels like a day you know it does Um, and and you're right having john boyd at the end is a great little i mean you have dwight yokum you know john boyd and then you have robert duvall and like this little span of like in uh, screen time it's like it's awesome dude and i didn't yeah. i didn't realize that either that's also like a father figure in every mm, in every scene um we're catching on i think so um everything you just said plus a cherry on top with a bunch of uh, fus to everybody who thinks it's a 25 really this yeah, is a 12 right. this is a 12 for me S- yeah. surprisingly s- made me laugh my pants off my stepsister and I were cracking up real bad. Like we were like quoting it. We were laughing. Like, what is your favorite part? And then a year or two later passed, or maybe like four years passed. Um, one of my favorite cousins, we're, we, I don't get to see him as much. But when I did see him, I, I said a quote from that movie 
and then he just started going off on the the, the spiel of Susan and and uh, Denver's conversation about I mean of the gameplay. And he does a whole. I mean, he's he's good at he does comedians like word for word jokes. And I'm like, damn, how do you do that? I can't do that. Like that's so crazy. Oh, he can hear it once and he can regurgitate it. But he did that same thing, and I was like, dude. Four, he goes, yeah, I love that movie. Me too. And it, you know, we talked about it for you know a good time. But yeah, this is a twelve for me. If ands or buts, I mean, it's got a car. I mean, just because it does, it, despite it has a strong cast, you yeah. cannot, you cannot, you cannot. A strong cast is gonna pull through. Like you cannot talk bad about a strong cast. Like that's your go-to. Yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, but they, no, dude, you didn't you reckon on the story? But the story doesn't really doesn't. Uh, it's evolve. a great story. I great mean, story. It's, it's one of those where you get caught. I mean, it's a story that. It, it makes sense why you're on this journey and you know exactly where you're going and if you have a problem with that i mean that's your own fault you know just because you know where you're going doesn't mean you can't have a good time getting there yeah um but so like you mentioned before uh we are running short on time uh so i propose this to you cj all right for our season two 2021 start off of the year we aren't going to tell the listeners where exactly we're going to be going. We're going to have to figure this out a little bit later. I, I'm afraid. Yeah, so I think uh, we, we it'll be a surprise. How are we getting into 2021, y'all? We have no idea. Oh, yeah. God. So yeah, so we're definitely so I'm, I've been calling this and, and Ben's been calling it. Uh, I guess 2020 is season one. So now that we're winding down this last episode for uh, for uh, season one, uh, we're gonna be jumping into season two in 2021. So let's see what we have in store for you. We uh, we got here by accident and we're going over there by accident, but we're just gonna keep you a little bit under the under the blinds. But uh, we yeah, do. Uh, on, on, okay, what were you gonna say? Oh, I was just gonna say, like, I'm I'm excited. This is kind of cool too. I mean, we were we were a little crunched at the time, but I think it's gonna uh, be a good thing. All right, I know. So yeah, we 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 do have to go. My boy's gotta go, so I'm gonna have to I'm gonna cut it here. But uh, thank you for hanging out with us. And the music has been playing because I'm gonna have to cut it. It's gonna be a, 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 a sharp cut. So we'll surprise hey, you Merry with Christmas, guys. And Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Happy birthdays. Guys, Happy. Peace. <laughs> we'll see y'all later. Thank you for uh, hanging out with us, and uh, we'll see what we got for you in store for 2021. Um, peace. Bye. Adios. <laughs>